What up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And joining us today is the man behind the scenes, the man who puts everything together. You, you, you may not know that, like, how much work this man does, but you've seen his work. From uh, Maxon at Major VFX, Matthias Omatola, thanks for joining us. Hello, true believers. Good morning. <laughs> And MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects, plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor. We're working for the man. You can email us, info at MoGraph.com. Let us know what you think about the show, questions, comments, concerns, queries, or grievances. And I just wanted to put in there, make sure that you subscribe to all of our new channels. Because if you haven't noticed, if you're trying to watch stuff on the old, uh, the old uh, Brograph site, that is going away. We're cutting those feeds short. You're not going to get to see the stuff there anymore. I know lots of people are still watching over there, and you need to resubscribe, or else you just won't get any more updates on anything. And then you'll just not know how to do motion graphics anymore. It's true. You won't know yeah. how to do motion graphics anymore. At all. Like, yeah. you'll forget. Actually, literally- no, all that information you've already learned from us will be taken away. Yeah. Through yeah. magic. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be deleted. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you have to be, you have to remain subscribed in order to keep your, your right. license to all of our brain food. So, a um, couple updates for the week that I wanted to go over real quick. This is going to be a short show. Like Maybe. I always say. Because and, I have to load a truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to load a truck. We got uh, stuff and things that we got to do. And um, a couple things I wanted to go over. Number one, Orville's up for an Emmy for. Their uh, their effects, which is awesome, and they're moving. I that they're moving over to Hulu full time. Yeah, instead of their, I think they're gonna have more money with that too. Right? Maybe like, I don't know. They got that Hulu money. That and, Hulu uh, money. <laughs> that episode. I'm telling you, that episode that uh, the two parter with the crazy, crazy. Not the one. Not the one from the end of the year, but the yeah. one in the middle of season two with the crazy space scene. It's one of the best space scenes I've seen on TV. So. There's that. Also, I don't know if anybody's been watching uh, Euphoria on HBO, Mm -hmm. but man, there's some really cool stuff that they're doing with cinematography, so I'm just going to put that out there. I watched uh, uh, Good Omens on Amazon Prime. Excellent. Super good show. pieces of it. Yeah. Yeah. You can be jealous with free time. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's funny. Come on, work like balance, yo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. This is what goes on the TV while I'm working. All right, so all right. The, <laughs> That's why yeah. I bought a 55-inch TV right. to put above my monitor. Oh, yeah. So smart. <laughs> See, that's... Two things at once. Yeah. <sighs> um, also, <laughs> has anybody been checking out the Face app this week? The which one? The 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 the, the old. Everybody's doing the old photo of themselves. I haven't done it. I don't. I don't like knowing how. I like death is one of my biggest fears. Like, I really, Mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of growing older. I don't like that I got a haircut the other day and I saw a lot of gray falling out. I don't like that my beard is super gray. So, like, being able to see myself as an old man uh, uh, scares me. So. It just means that the wisdom's coming in. Yeah, no. No. It means we run our own company is what that means. I've gotten more gray and you've lost a lot more hair. (laughs) Yeah. Well. Uh, the, yeah, uh, Liam says, Russia takes your face. Yeah. (laughs) I, I, I think it's funny that people are like, oh, face app, they like take your information and use it for advertising. I'm like, you know what Facebook is, right? Yeah. You know, (laughs) but, uh, whatever. Um, We'll we'll talk about that later. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. Um, the podcast is on Spotify now. We had some weird technical issues. Yay. I've been trying to get it su- like submitted for months, and I'm like, you know, finally we're getting a little bit of um, uh, of, of traction on that because I know a lot of people have been asking for that. So that's there. That's good. Um, so you can just search for that on Spotify if you want to subscribe there. You can get rid of your iTunes <laughs> that way. <laughs> finally, uh, finally. And um, Camp MoGraph. Camp, Tickets Camp are... MoGraph. That's right. Yeah. 
<laughs> got uh, a little bit of uh, tickets left at this point. I want to say 20-something tickets, I think. Yeah. Uh, so uh, make sure that if you are planning to go that you lock that in. I think that um, that's probably a good idea, especially if flight-wise, if you're going to be scheduling that out Yeah. to get that locked in soon. Also, a uh, reminder, EJ Bendy Limbs Contest... Uh, remember the M- Camp MoGraph post that we have all of the counselors and instructors and everything in. If you uh, retre- it, re- retreat, if you retweet that and uh, make sure that you use the hashtag Camp MoGraph, hashtag Bendy Limbs, and make sure that you add iDesign with that, you'll be entered to win a copy of the Bendy Limbs rig if you retweet that one particular tweet. Uh, we're going to end that at the end of... SIGGRAPH, like when we come back from SIGGRAPH, and the Slack is going to be closing again. We had like 50-something people sign up already in a week, and uh, I think we're going to cap it because we like people to know each other. Yes. Um, and so make sure if you are one of those new people that signed up that you introduce yourself, uh, and maybe in general post a link uh, to your reel, tell everybody what you're about, say, hey, I'm new here, this is what I do, introduce yourself to the community because. Uh, we don't, we don't, we don't want everybody to just lurk. Come, come, join in the fun. I mean, you can lurk you know? if you want, but that's no you can fun. Lurk if you want, but then we don't know who you, you are. You can lurk if you want to. You can leave <laughs> your friends behind, <laughs> cause your friends don't lurk, and if they don't lurk, oh then they gosh. ain't no friends of mine. <laughs> that's the song for the what internet. Happened? Is that is that the <laughs> that's the theme yeah. for the internet this week? I uh, might have to remix that one now. <laughs> oh, that was good. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I don't have much... For, we're going straight into Ravcock. What's your flavor? What's your flavor? Just uh, two things that I put on the show notes that are actually from you, Matt. Oh, yeah? Um, I, yeah, I just a note about Redshift VDB offset. And VDB I don't even remember offset. what that's about. That was uh, from being me. Being able to offset. Oh, that it's a negative offset. Remember? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we were doing some, uh, we were doing some Redshift. Uh, we were doing some X particles to VDB and then bringing it into Redshift. Nice. And uh, I wanted to do it at a certain point, but you needed to make sure that the offset, and you know, you would think that you do, like, oh, I want to offset at 2,000 frames. It's actually a negative number. For some reason, you put in a negative number. I don't yeah. know. So that was interesting. Yeah. And then I do like I will say uh, uh, it was my first chance really messing around with VDBs and Redshift, and I really like that uh, you're able to see them as points and stuff. And so as you're scrolling through your timeline and stuff, you can see them automatically updating. So Mm. yeah, it's pretty nice. You guys are farther along than I am. (laughs) (laughs) We're really not. We're really not. (laughs) I'm glad to be as far as I am on Redshift at this point. I'm I'm starting to feel comfortable. So. uh, the other thing is uh, Redshift proxies, creating a Redshift proxy. Did you have some sort of a, I don't know, did you have a, an issue creating a proxy or something like that? Not sure. I don't know. You were just talking about Redshift proxies. Maybe the process. I don't know. I, I, I don't I remember, remember what, what I was talking said. about. It was oh. just, I mean. <laughs> I should have been more specific in yeah, my Yeah, you should have. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so let's just get on with the meat of the show because we got a lot to talk about in topics today. This is the main Matthias is a for the show. vegan vegetarian, so let's not get to the meat of it. Let's get to the mushroom of yeah. the of the show. Let's get to the impossible burger. <laughs> let's get to the impossible let's, burger. Let's, let's get show. beyond this. <laughs> yeah, ah, <laughs> there we go. Ah. Ah. Puns. There you go. That's right. That's what we do here. Yes. Just keep it punny. Man, we we even have we even have a Beeple a Beeple's people theme for that Beyond thing. So I think Beyond Burger will be the theme of the show. <laughs> okay. It'll be the episode Sponsored by Beyond I'm Burger. I'm mad I didn't invest in them. They're making bank w- now. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're doing amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess the first topic of the day is going to be the Seagraph lineup. We're going to talk about who's going to be there. There's a lot of fresh faces. So this is one of those things where we can really uh, help everybody familiarize themselves with who's going to be talking and what uh, presentations uh, they might want to catch. I mean, I would say just catch all of them, of course. But uh, you can catch all the presentations at Mm c40live.com. You can also see who is presenting uh, as of right now. Go through and see everything. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. And that's kind of, that's what we're going to kind of do here. We're going to go yep. down the list because Matthias, you know, 
better than we do because there's a lot of people I haven't met before. Totally. And Matt hasn't met before. So well, before we get started, I just wanted to uh, send a lot of love and prayers to the folks in Kyoto, Japan and uh, Kyoto Animation um, yeah. for, oh, for yeah. that, that tragedy that's happening there. So there's a lot of different things that happen in our industry, and that's kind of one of the biggest tragedies. So I just wanted to send a lot of love out to everybody there uh, before we get started. And uh, secondly, to all the true believers, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for these folks, and that's uh, all the Marvel fans. So Marvel Endgame is the number one movie of all time, if you guys yep. didn't, didn't know that. So congratulations. Totally. Yeah. yeah, we can now all finally rest and watch the sunrise on a grateful universe. <laughs> half of the top we'll just put confetti up for it. Half oh, of the yeah. top ten funny. has been wiped out and replaced by Marvel films. That's so now funny. the entertainment industry is perfectly wow. balanced as all things oh, should be. <laughs> <laughs> How long That's did it right. take you to write all this? No, no, no. no. This was this is all out of the shower. And then, you know, to all the shower the, thoughts. All the fans of the movie with the blue people, I hope they remember you. <laughs> you know, I, I hope they remember you. You were a good film. Like Fern yeah. Gully. It was well, a very good film. <laughs> what's ridiculous is that like Disney owns Avatar and Disney owns oh yeah they Marvel, own the so it's th- like they only have like three spots that they don't own. It's like Paramount yeah. and you know Titanic and something else. But to Stan Lee, you know Jack Kirby and uh, his wife, their wives, and everybody in the Marvel family, Excelsior and thank you for all the inspiration. So totally. that's why I'm here because I, I am a true nerd. See, look at that. This is this is original. This is back in the oh, '90s, snap. folks. Snap. This is the original. Look at I also, you know, the man who's also a spider. You know, <laughs> the, <man. laughs> the doctor who's unusual. Look okay. at that. You know, the men who are also exes and women that are also exes. <laughs> All the classics. So, yeah, we can dive ex- in. Pe- ex people. Yeah, ex people. Yes, ex people. Ex people. Yes. I think bird person will be in the ex people. <laughs> yeah. <That's funny. laughs> So, okay, Sigraph. so your, your official title with Maxon is what? Manager of Events and Community. So you put a lot of this together. There's a lot of people at Maxon that work really hard to put these events together, but you are just running around 24-7 making sure these events are going off. Yeah, producing all and, the events in the Americas, yeah, from Canada to Chile. Mm-hmm. If it's, you know, that's constant. It's constant. Yeah. So it's like herding if cats. you're watching live, <laughs> yeah, because you get you know working with artists and schedules, you guys know, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on, and you know, um, I I can imagine that finding new artists has got to be kind of difficult. I mean, you're you're going to all these different places and stuff like that, but it's got to be it's got to be hard to be like, and especially vetting the right ones. You know, yeah, that's yeah. got to be a, a heck of a process. Yeah, it's a challenge. I mean, one one of the things is, yes, you have to make good art, right? So I, I kind of go off of, um, was it Neil Gaiman? He was like, okay, you know, make good art, right? That's be good, be fast, and uh, have people like you. And so that's kind of mm-hmm. the thing is if you're good, you know, you do good work and you're able to show it instead of the fast thing and, uh, you know, are you good with people? Because you guys have been at our events for years. You know what it's like. If you're, mm-hmm. if you're a community player, you want to meet people, you want to network, you want to have a good time, definitely we want you there. If you're you know, somebody who's complaining all the time, you have just a bunch of negativity, you don't like to be around people, antisocial, you know, just really negative, um, mm-hmm. it's, it's not the environment to take everybody down because this is like a giant family reunion. You know? Nobody wants the, yeah. the drunk uncle who wants to fight everybody there. For sure. <laughs> you know? Oh, and like we always say when we see this lineup is when these, when these people are announced because uh, we have pretty good faith in your, in your selection. So yeah. when, these, when these people are announced, we're like, well, these are all our new best friends yeah. on this list. <laughs> you know, these are all going to be our friends know, by the end of the I week. may not know who they are, but they'll know who I am by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> that Matt guy. So, Whether you like it um, or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're going to know me. All right. Do you know me yet? Let's <laughs> let's talk about the lineup. I'm going to bring it up here. We can go through. And, and uh, Matthias, just give us a synopsis of uh, each person. Yeah, for sure. So and, you, um, you guys know Billy. So yeah. Billy, actually, oh, yeah. um, he was with us at our last minute quick tips 
at the end of NAB. So you did get a little, yeah. you get, did get a little snippet of him, um, Gern. She did get a little snippet of him right at the end of NAB. So uh, after talking with him and seeing all that stuff, you guys are like, you have to have him on the, in the crew. And I was like, well, he's yep. already been here. He's already been on stage for you know yeah. a couple minutes. So yeah, let's let's do it. So uh, happy to yeah. have him joining. Yeah, Billy's a badass. Cool. I'm very excited to see his presentation. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so Blake Catherine, she actually came from uh, Casey Latchelet from okay. Buck. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I've been working on, once again, perfectly balanced, as all things should be, mm-hmm. is uh, I got, you know, I believe I'm at 50% women present presenters, if not, awesome. uh, you know, just across that threshold. And she was one of the ones that uh, Casey from Buck actually recommended. So uh, checked out her presentation review. Really cool stuff. So you're going to like it. Uh, some good Redshift stuff, too. So Yeah, I started following her cool. on Instagram. I totally love her style. Totally yeah. love her style. Yeah, really good stuff there. Cool. Oh, Brienne. Now, Brienne is um, it's really cool because Brienne I met at Buck. But before that, I actually met her. Um, she was a student in David Baudur's class at Ringling. Cool. And the year before she was at huh. Buck, um, I did a presentation for her classroom via saddle or, you know, via Skype. So I was at Buck and she saw me. She's like, Hey, I remember you. And I was like, I have no idea who you are. As, <laughs> so, so, you know, once again, another uh, end game quote, I have no idea who you are. Yeah. So that, uh, so that was another situation. She's like, Oh yeah, you presented my class. I was like, Oh wow. So it's great. You know, seeing how the the community and yeah she's she's there and she did some really good she's doing some really good character work too so she goes through a whole character mm-hmm. uh that's thing, awesome so i'm really excited about her that's super awesome cool now then you got this I, asshole I, I have no <laughs> idea how he snuck on the lineup yeah I what know, a right? jerk. So, uh, <laughs> so um, ha- have you have you reviewed my presentation yet nope I looked at it, um, but okay. I think we've been looking at the project that you've been talking about for a while. So the field stuff and things like that yeah. are really cool. And I think people are going to get a lot out of it. So I'll, I'll dive in okay. tonight. I have a couple more, but the majority of people who submitted, I've got to review. But I'm not too worried because, you know, you'll get a lot more pressure from everybody in the community if you do bad than just, you know, us. <laughs> right. No <laughs> pressure. Sure. No pressure. Yeah. That guy. Oh, man. Yeah. So he's going to be showing you how to do every the Toy Story button, the new Toy Story button that just came out. So we yeah. have a lot of demand for this. It's one button that just makes the animations that you're thinking about. So he'll be announcing yep. that. Toy Story. Mm-hmm, the Toy yep. Story David, button. Yeah. David Is that Gavin. using like the Neuralink stuff from... Uh, Neuralink from, uh, with Tesla? Yeah. That's yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah, a whole, yeah. uh-huh. whole corporate buyout weird thing, you know, with <laughs> neurotechnology of Tesla and Toy Story. So... Yeah, in association with all the major companies. Yeah, got to be careful about what you say. Someone's going to take it seriously. It's like, oh, they bought Pixar right. and Tesla. That's what they did. Yeah, Maxon's taking over. <laughs> Antitrust yeah. companies coming at us right now, shutting us down. <laughs> all right, and then we've got yeah, Dave McGavin, you, you our CEO. To... Though, by the way, folks, if you guys didn't know, Dave McGavin, oh, yeah, our yeah. CEO. So. Yes. So these gentlemen, and, uh, Duarte, you'll have to, yeah. How do you? How, you're going to have to do the pronunciation on some of these people. Yeah, uh, I'm so bad at it. Duarte Elvas uh, and Jake Allen from uh, they are from Swarovski. So that that's studio cool. out of out of Chicago. Oh, okay. You know uh, yeah. Swarovski because um, yeah, Aaron's going to be at uh, Camp Mograph. Yeah, Camp Camp, Camp Mograph. Camp Mograph. <laughs> that's right. So yeah, <laughs> they're going to be presenting some of their stuff. So that's exciting. They, do, I mean. Swarovski, if you have, haven't seen them, check them out. They've worked on some Marvel stuff. Totally. So, yeah, love their work. Cool. This Next one, uh, Emiliano yeah, Tapote. Yeah, I'm excited I'm, about this one. Oh, I started man. following, uh, uh, what's the, the company? Polygoon? Yeah, Polygoon. I, I started following Polygoon. them on Instagram. Like I'm, their their cartoon stuff is awesome. I'm really excited. I wish he had a two hour slot. He's going to be doing a presentation <laughs> in English, and he's also going to be doing uh, it in Spanish as well. So Sweet. It's a, a ni- nice focus. So day one, Sweet. he's going to present in English. Uh, day two, he's just on uh, our demo, so you can chat with him. And then mm-hmm. day three, he's going to present in Spanish. Same presentation. His character stuff is so good. Um, yeah. I'm, it, it's so good. Anyway, I watched the. Um, I did his, his review and it's really good. Try to have him dive in because there's so many different things, how to extract it and give us to 
give us some of those nuggets for people who aren't doing character animation. And he wasn't for a sure. character animator and didn't go to school for it. But he just really nails all the cartoon like poses, the way that he builds his rigs are really intelligent, the whole process. So, yeah, Emiliano, he's presented with EJ down in Mexico. Um, for yeah, I was going to say. Kira Toro. Yeah, he's presenting Kira oh. Toro. Um, Mexico with EJ before, and I've just heard great feedback, so I'm, I'm glad to have him on the stage. Cool. Eric Small. Uh, Eric has uh, presented with us a number of times at the Association of Medical Illustrators Conference, so this is great for anybody who wants to go on the micro level. Um, mm-hmm. If you're going to the microverse, you know, like Ant Man or uh, yes, <laughs> every, everything's Marvel, man. I told you, I'm a nerd. It's yeah. not going to stop. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, so if you're into any of the microorganisms, uh, uh, you know, atomic structures and things like that, this mm-hmm. would be the gentleman to talk to. So definitely check out that. Has he presented at NAB before? I, uh, I think they've had so Nucleus yeah, we, there. He's, he's right? been on our stage before, for sure. Cool. I mean, NAB okay. and SIGREF at this point, I don't know. I'm like 20, I'm like 10 years in. Right, right, 20 right, shows, right. But it's a big yeah, blur. He's, he's definitely been in, he's been with us several times. And cool. he's on Cineversity. Uh, James Ramirez. So uh, James Ramirez actually worked on Into the Spider Verse. So those That's end sweet. credits, yeah. So the end credits of Into the Spider Verse, he worked on that. A number of other things, but I actually presented with him in Austin. So uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Was so that at, at the uh, at the, the uh, party yeah, we yeah, went yeah. to? Yeah, exactly. So that oh, was with, Brian um, Beams. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. Brian, Brian Beams down there. So um, so yeah, I was presenting, and then I saw his presentation. I was like, what? And then he was like, yeah, I'll send him. I was like, all right, well, let's chat and. You know, so we get to see some of the breakdowns of Into the Spider-Verse and some of the other stuff that he's doing with Redshift. Really good. I'm kind That's of learning awesome. Redshift from my presenters by watching the presentations. <laughs> this is, this is how, how I do it. I'm like, oh, thanks. Making it a little bit easier. Uh, oh, this guy. Oh, man. This, this, is, this is one of Chris Brown's favorite uh, resources. Oh! Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Jan Slandeko. So, yeah, Jan is presented with us several times. He used to be at uh, The Mill, I think, a while ago. He just he went freelance. Uh, uh-huh. But he's been doing these really cool, you know, Spaceman animations and uh-huh. just really great artist overall. So wanted to bring him back and maybe showcase some of his personal projects because I think so many people now are doing character stuff that weren't character animators. So I, yeah. there's going to be a lot of character stuff. So hopefully That's Jan's awesome. going to be able to show that. I haven't, uh, I haven't got a chance to review his. I don't think he's turned his in yet. Jan, if you're listening <laughs> to this and everybody else there's... is listening to this, we got a week and a half. I, I need some time to build a booth, you know? So uh, yeah, please get that to me, Nancy. But yeah, it's yeah. He he posted his fourth spaceman animation this week, and uh, on on his Facebook page, <laughs> I just put a picture of Chris Brown like rubbing his hands, mm-hmm. ready to get it, <laughs> got the, ready to got, steal it. Got that, got that new, <laughs> new free stolen content. It's <laughs> funny. All right, who's next? Jessica Herosaurus. So uh, Jessica, all the way from the UK. If you haven't seen her uh, Instagram, it's Herosaurus. And as far as character, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as character animators, once again, another amazing character animator, all cinema pipeline, um, phenomenal Mm -hmm. stuff. I love her use of color and everything, but for character animation, cartoonic style, uh, Mm -hmm. this is going to be a good one too. So really excited. She's presenting a node fest as well. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I haven't, I I haven't, haven't Mm -hmm. got down to node fest yet. That's something else I need to get to. Oh, man, I love her that's style. A, that's a big one. She's done a couple of these. Like, there's this one of uh, this character. I, I don't know. Like, with crazy hair, eating uh, 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 what bubble wrap and stuff like that. Oh, so good, <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, cool. all right. And then uh, next up, yeah, Lara. Lara. So, uh, Lara, actually, I met at uh, the Denver meetup with EJ. When she was oh, presenting. Okay. So, yeah, so oh. the EJ introduced me to her. He's like, oh, you know, you should definitely meet her. Really amazing designer. She actually um, did my book cover. So she, oh, cool. she's been an amazing designer. Just picked up cinema end of December. So wow. uh, I actually worked with her mm-hmm. and uh, like three other uh, women who are just in After Effects and Design, uh, you know, kind of testing out and um, how to help somebody learn cinema 4d as fast as possible. That's some of the stuff I know mm-hmm. with uh, MoGraph.com, the class putting together that with you guys. Yep. 
mm-hmm. um, learning 3D fast. So I took her through a, like 12 weeks every every lunch. I took my lunch hour to eat lunch and, and teach cinema. That's and, awesome. Um, yeah, within there, then just getting them commercially viable. And she's done a couple of really cool projects. Google picked her up to do this VR project. So she used cinema on that. She has this really cool base camp animation, too, which is a uh, perspective style animation. So I'm still working with her on her stuff. It's first time out of the gates, you know, so mm-hmm. she's like getting her caught up on terminology and things like that. But uh, really good for beginners. But she covers a wide breadth of, uh, you know, range from design all the way to you know vr within a year so it's like i had to learn 3d and now i'm doing vr and she's an amazing figure skater too so oh cool <laughs> yeah su- oh, really? super talented all around yeah cool, but sitting wow. down sitting down through i'm like oh wow you're more talented more athletic than me uh, you have your own studio <laughs> i was like okay yeah i'm glad i can help in some way <laughs> right <laughs> like, thanks uh liran lyron i like calling her lyron because it's a cool cool looking name ashkenazi um so her style if you haven't checked her out this is, was another name i believe from um casey as well from buck so he, he gave me he's like hey there's a, there's a number of folks i checked out her style really dug it wow, i believe she's yeah. from brooklyn i'm looking at her instagram <clears throat> right now yeah so Super as far high. as sketch and tune so if you guys like sketch and tune style she really dives in and gives you some really easy ways to create a lot of different looks using sketch and tune I know EJ does that a lot too. So definitely check this out if you're into the tune style. Her presentation was really rock solid right from the beginning. Um, so I was really excited. And for everybody in the world of tune shading, definitely check this one out. That's awesome. Marty, uh, we had him back at, uh, once again. He was in Infinity War. I mean, mm-hmm. do, I, do I need to say more? You know, so Territory, <laughs> you know, works at Territory. He's put together a, a lot of amazing things. So he's coming right from. So he's at Comic-Con, then he goes over <laughs> to, um, I think he's at AE World, and then he comes right to us. I think awesome. him and Robin, Robin Haddow had the same schedule, she's later on. So Is, really is um, Comic-Con in the same convention center that we're going to be in? No, Comic-Con's in San Diego. Yeah. We're, we're in oh, the, that's uh, right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah I, 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 I wish. I mean, I love San Diego. Tell Sigraph, go, go to San Diego. It's better. Yeah, there. he was, he presented last year at Sigraph, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Megan Newall. She presented with us in 2013. I can't. I can't believe how like how many years I've been here. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> old in the game, folks. Old school. Yeah. So Megan presented. She went from you know uh, t- traditional 2D to 3D, mm-hmm. and her whole presentation is now on AR. She was at Lyft for a while, and. Um, mm-hmm. She did a motion graphics presentation with us in 2013, but now she's going showing AR pipeline as well as 3D printing pipeline. So if you're into AR and that and building content for AR and if you're into building and modeling for, you know, 3D printing, this is going to be a great presentation for you. She has some cool, cool, cool unique tools that I was wondering about um, that she actually talks about. I think one of them is like Magic Merge that just helps you with yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, overlapping, mm-hmm. yeah, overlapping topology. Like, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, I've actually, yeah, I've used that for three D printing before. It takes all the all the guts out of your model, so you yeah, can I like that. I like that. Yeah, I didn't know about it until I saw her stuff. Yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> this gentleman, uh, this guy, yeah, that guy, this, uh, screw people. that guy. <laughs> he's, he's, he's been doing daily, you know, daily artwork since before many of your kids were born. <laughs> right. So, so, that so is got, true. He has, Holy he crap! Art, he has, wow. Yeah, he's been doing daily. <laughs> true. You know, as long so, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty awesome to have him back. So he's only going to be one day. Um, the people, yeah. So I s- still think we're probably going to need to find people to jump on the mic. So maybe you guys want to mic up with him. Yeah, uh, this time. Do a live people's people. Do yeah. yeah, let's do live people's people. That'll be <laughs> awesome. Up. Oh man, we can come up with. Oh like, man, all the we gotta ask him what the story is for everything. <laughs> you know, I don't know, guys. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> throw some spears in there <laughs> yeah Love yeah not guy. much has to really be said about mike you yeah. know i mean the man the myth the legend yeah yeah so min she so she hasn't given us our information but she's over at elastic um i found her work a while ago when um i think somebody in the office was like have you seen this and if you take a look at her Whoa, Instagram, holy yeah, cow, the Saint Beam, yes. she's, so, yeah. So she does some really good. Uh, has a has a like a darker theme. A lot of her stuff has yeah. a, a dark, darker theme. 
But when I found her, I was like, oh man, she's in LA. I was like, wow, okay. I think she's over at Elastic. And uh, she presented at, um, with actually the- Matthew from, uh, he's at the future, used to be blind, mm-hmm. um, at CTNX is, is a show in the fall. And mm-hmm. I had her present there for the first time. She just killed it. And it's so funny. Every time I see, yeah. I have somebody present, all of a sudden I see them at like countless things. Like people are just like right. grabbing all, all the presenters. It's like, oh, you're, you're already pre-vetted from here. Okay, we'll just, yeah. So she's been on a number of things, but she, Min's a really great uh, artist overall. I really like oh, her stuff. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the show in LA? Uh, was it like back in February? I think like David Aryev was there. He wasn't presenting, but, but David went and i think barton was there like matt you and i wanted to go it was in la yeah i don't remember i think she was presenting that show and everybody was just like going nuts oh oh yes i can't remember I, the name of that i can't remember either <laughs> but, but, but they went to a couple cities i think there was like uh france yeah. and japan yeah we were looking i think we sponsored it the year before but yeah 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 she was at that too that's awesome yeah great work robin oh Yay. my god robin is just one of my favorite motion design plus sorry motion plus motion, motion design, design plus, plus. That's yes that's motion, what it was yeah or motion plus designs yeah sorry yeah okay R- robin robin just one of my favorite people regardless mm-hmm. uh just one of the most beautiful energies i'd uh, be around yeah. just up ups mm-hmm. everybody with her with her smile and her attitude and she's funny and sarcastic and not mm-hmm. and, it, and it doesn't hurt but you get the point <laughs> no it's great no, so, so robin i mean she's worked on a number of marvel uh films um mm-hmm. ant-man the wasp thor ragnarok it was probably one of my highlights of sitting next to her in a movie i, w- I actually went to oh, see thor ragnarok so, with her. Cool. so i was like i'm sitting here like shoulder to shoulder with robin i was just like i'm such a happy nerd right now <laughs> um and i was and, and it doesn't stop so any any chance to bring her back i was so happy that with her busy schedule she was able to join us again she is super That's busy super, yeah 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 we've been trying to get her on the show for a while but she's just always got so much stuff going on yeah and she should Mm -hmm. (laughs) she should yeah oh yeah for sure i love this guy russ is the best (laughs) another another great great artist another huge contributor to the uh, marvel cinematic universe of the folks over at perception Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. he'll be joining us again um can't say enough about him if you've seen the marvel opener in any of the most recent you know films in the last i forgot which mm-hmm. one they when they started it but yeah all those the, the flipping through and the zoom mm-hmm. out of marvel studios that that was uh, all them um yep. so yeah perception will be joining us th- w- w- with russ it's super exciting shams so um shams i met in vancouver a while ago and we, i've just been following on instagram she's come up to me a number of times and uh you can check out her work. So very artistic, and she uses really intelligent uh, techniques to be able to, you know, produce work really quick. So definitely check out her Instagram. You know her, what's her Instagram? Do you know? Um, you know, I will know in a second. <laughs> you know, I, it's hard to fu- like if I had to, if I could remember everybody's Instagram as long as their name. Come on, the work Matthias, they did, right. you, you I know. can't. You can't. It's so hard, and then you you have to do these posts and stuff, and you have to at people, but uh-huh. like their Twitter's different than their yeah. Instagram, which I think is different it's than their Facebook. S M A. Yeah. There we go. Kevin's got it on the chat here. There he is. Okay. Yeah. S M E C C E A. Yep. See, that's me. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, cool. ch- check out her work there. So really good artistic styling. And then Victor, and Victor. Uh, Victor, another one. From the great north, um, <laughs> the great north Canada. <laughs> so, in from, in from Toronto, um, I saw his work at, I think it was, yeah, I think it was NAB. Yeah. He showed me what he was mm-hmm. working on, and I was just like, yeah. wow, yeah. this Victor's is... Victor's got some super awesome space, space, space stuff. Yeah, so yeah. really nice, and through his presentation, he was uh, giving shout-outs to a lot of, you know, the different artists who inspired him from, you know, Mitch Myers and Chad Ashley and... You know, Raid Zero and David mm-hmm. Aryev. So he, he mentioned a lot of other mm-hmm. people, and you can see how all of those different styles went into the, uh, you know, contribute to him being able to bring together his stuff. So I uh, really like it. His use of scale. Um, you know, I'm mm-hmm. a big person for epic shots. Yeah. So we, we were talking about, you know, VFX shots and stuff like that. And after seeing his stuff, I was like, oh, wow. A lot of people, especially since he's, 
you know, kind of just starting off and, and diving in. He has a lot of things um, that I think anybody who's looking to do epic shots is going to really, you know, pull from. They're going to they're going to get a lot out of that. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Is that everyone? That's everybody. Wow. All right. Man, it's a lot of people. How many? Is that? Tw- it's 21, right? Mm. 21 people from what, 20? I, from what I heard. I don't know if that's true. See, the, the whole thing is the Monday meeting this morning. They were like, you see, the whole thing is there's 21 people, and that's a code for something. Oh. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> getting conspiratorial these, these people are so good at hacking all of our techniques i mean <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't even come on here they already broke they broke the code how did That's you know funny. yeah penny penny i was like see the whole thing the maxon logo is actually flat and <laughs> flat earth you know like flat so it's earth. like flat earth and yeah all the conspiracies are coming out this morning everybody wants to know what's this press event you know things mm-hmm. like that it's funny but um so, all right, so we did the lineup, right? And now we need to, uh, now we got quite a few topics we wanted to hit today. Number one was exposure versus advertising. That's right. And, okay. Yeah. And this is, a, this is a topic that I think the Monday meeting they're going to discuss next week, too. So if you're... Oh, if you, ah, we beat them. You know. <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah. first. first. <laughs> God. Yeah, um, That's right. so so this is uh, something that Matthias, you and I were talking about a few weeks ago. We thought it would be a good show topic, so I don't know where you want to start with that. But. Yeah, totally. Well, I think the the big thing is just off the bat, there is there is exposure and there is exploitation. Mm-hmm. And there is, that's something to be able to keep in mind, and we all have our own creative boundaries for that. Um, so the thing that I want to encourage artists is when you look at exposure... Um, look at if it's exposure or exploitation. And this is kind of my, my take on it, right? Exposure is something akin to advertising when it's done correctly, right? Exploitation is when someone's trying to have you use your work, your skill, or your craft to spend time doing work and not get paid for it. Mm-hmm. So if somebody wants you to build an animation, logo, any type of design work, and they don't want to pay you, like, oh, can you just do this? It'll be good for you to do. Well, that's what school's for. Mm-hmm. You know, you go, you go to school to work on those projects. Yeah, do that while you're in school. When you're a professional, now you're going to be looking at, all right, I do this professionally. I should be compensated. This is what I'm looking at. This is what I do for a living. Great, let's do that. Let's not trade for blueberry muffins. You know, man can't live off blueberry muffins alone, even right. vegan ones. Right. <laughs> right. So, um, so that that's when you're when you're a working professional and people are trying to exploit you. Exposure, if you look at it from a business standpoint, you know, Gary Vanderjack, um, re- regardless of how you feel about him or, or his style, he's very good at marketing. You know, mm-hmm. and he says, mm-hmm. get your stuff out there everywhere. So. You know, a little while ago, I saw a, a real submission and somebody was complaining like, oh, if you're going to be used for a reel, you should be compensated. That's, you know, somebody's just trying to use exposure versus payment. And the way that I look at it is advertising, right? Mm-hmm. So you, you look at your work and if it's work that you've already done and you don't have to recreate work, you don't have to spend hours doing it, you're just getting it out mm-hmm. there, that's when you're starting to look at quality exposure or quality advertising of your brand. So I'm trying to encourage more artists to think of themselves as a brand, as Chris Doe does, you know, sure. um, mm-hmm. to look at yourself as a, as a brand and as a business. And if you're going to, say, be nominated for an award show, like the Oscars aren't going to be like, hey, you know what, um, we want to nominate you f- for your movie. You're going to be nominated and the movie's your producer studio is not going to be like, uh, you know, you're going to need to pay us to use our footage to represent the movie on your stage. Otherwise, we're not right. showing up to your show, mm-hmm. you know, or if Oprah calls and says, hey, you know, I want to interview you about your book. Like, yeah, but if we're going to talk about it and you're going to show a picture of it, I need to be compensated for that. Or Good Morning America right. or any vehicle that's basically just using work that you've already created. So if you've mm-hmm. already made it, look at it as a way to advertise your brand if you haven't made it be you know and someone's looking for you to create something that's when you need to look for okay maybe this is more exploit uh ex, you know more exploitation yeah there's there's i mean it's it's interesting the we had a discussion on this on the slack uh just this past week um ak matt 
uh, was uh, talking about the, the mm. AK, what, AK-40, AK-15, yeah. AR-15. AK-40, I can't remember which one. It was AK-47, guns guns. right? I thought. Um, yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he did, a, he did a, a, a really awesome animation, and a bunch of people have ripped him off. You know, mm-hmm. I think yeah. he had, what was it? It was like 1,600 YouTube takedown notices that he had to go through. You know, wow! What what, yeah. what did he make? I missed that one. It was it was a uh, this super cool like how an AK forty seven works and like oh, all, okay. all the intricacies yeah. of it and everything. Super super cool animation. You know, the biggest one was one in India that yeah. was like a movie that yeah, stole it was a movie it, that it, straight up movie, ripped it off for their opening titles wow. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. uh, but the I mean. And he was saying that he was getting a bunch of emails and stuff, people saying, hey, can I use this for my YouTube? I upload other people's work so that they can, uh, you know, of stuff that I think is interesting, but I give credit to you. And it's like, okay, there's a big difference between like... That's what a Tumblr's for. Right, right. (laughs) I mean, the thing is, like, there's a difference between saying, hey, we would like to license your work. We're going to put it on our YouTube page. You know, but we will pay you for that versus, oh, can I put your stuff on my YouTube page, you know, and I'll just link back to you. I mean, wow, it was just his same piece. It wasn't even anything else. Yeah, no, it was just Uh, his same piece. It wasn't even rebuilt. They didn't even do what, um, you know, movie studios do. Have you do all the work and then they just recreate it all themselves. (laughs) (laughs) Concept artists are like, yeah, this shot is perfect. Yeah, you're going to put it in the movie. No, we're going to rebuild it so we don't have to credit you. That's mm. funny, <laughs> man. Yeah. Now we we had a, a little bit a little bit of backlash <clears throat> on that when we did the the second uh, Brograph jam with Dead Mouse, and yeah. you know there there's a huge difference because we weren't asking people. We, we weren't, weren't saying okay, we were, first of all that you had to yeah. do it. We were just yeah. opening it up to submissions because people had a, wanted to last the la- the time before. You know, right. They're like, well, we want to mess around with this. And then and we were like, okay, well, here's all the stuff. And they're like, oh, you want all this done for free. And, you know, we some some what was that Twitter account? Nah, I don't, I'd rather not call them out. Yeah, you know, picked this up, and we we're like, we don't we're talk like, about trolls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, we're, the, the whole thing was that this is for people who wanted to take the scene file and mess around with it. We were mm-hmm. we didn't need what they were doing. We were yeah. already creating our own stuff. You know, yeah. It's not like we were relying on a bunch of free work to make it happen. Well, and I think that's the thing is when you reach out to the community and you, you know, ask for people to volunteer their work and they know how it's going to be, some of that might be inspiring. I mean, if Star mm-hmm. Wars, you know, if there's certain IPs that you want your brand to be associated with, right, that you personally mm-hmm. as an artist might like, just as people donate money, you can donate your time and skill to things that you just like. And I, it's not necessarily exploitation when it's volunteer. Voluntary. It's when someone's sure. trying to coerce you and say, hey, this right. is going to be really good exposure and all this. And it's like, well, they're just trying to profit from it. But if it's just a fun, creative mm-hmm. project and you're calling people out saying, hey, if you have work you want to put up or if you do have free time and you do want to actually invest in creating something in a venue that's going to, you know, be brand um uh, you know, positive for you and associate with you and you can get your work put up there. That could be just something that feels good for you as an artist. So it's, it's yeah. more of a mindset to get yourself out of everybody who's asking for art isn't looking to exploit it. Some of them are just fellow artists working on cool projects, mm-hmm. you know, and doing a project I was ecstatic, for Burning Man. man. Yeah. Now, I was ecstatic when, when Maxon put one second of something I worked on on yeah, a right? reel a couple <laughs> of years ago. Like, that was like, oh my gosh, like, that's been my dream. And that one, mm-hmm. that to have that one second of, you know, and then some people aren't into that. Yeah. yeah I mean, th- there's, there, there's, well, totally- I know, I, I know one guy in particular. Sorry to interrupt. I know one guy, I've got a friend who is very, like, he keeps his work very close to him. He does not like putting it out there because he's too worried about someone stealing it or something. But to me, it's it's always like, well, if you do that, no one will ever know who you are. You know, you need to put Mm -hmm. your stuff out there. You need to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid. Yeah, sure. Some people are going to rip you off. Those are bad people, you know, but you do quality work. You're going to get noticed. Yeah. And and the the thing is, is this is. When we are creating things from scratch and you're going to be working 
on a project, that's when you're using your professional skill. If you've already created something and now you're sharing it with the world, that is good advertising. It's kind of like being a furniture designer or something like that. Oh, I built my furniture, but I'm never going to let anybody see it. It's right. like, no, you want people to, to <laughs> see your work and things like that. And it, to me, like, it's an honor. Whenever I get to work with any artist that I look up up to, you know, sometimes I'll work and I'm, I mean, I'll hire some of my artists. They'll hire me, um, you know, Satine, I work with back and forth. Um, so Satine Phoenix, she does a lot of stuff with D&D. So mm-hmm. we hire each other mm-hmm. and that's really fun. Um, you know, I was at a motion conference in New Mexico uh, I think it was like two years now with Robin and uh, John Lapore. This was like one of my favorite times because they did a whole like recreation of war games. So every, it was like a cool. full day, a full day. So we thought of, okay, what movie would be cool to recreate? So John started off, you know, recreating, you know, some concept art. And then Robin in the afternoon started recreating, uh, you know, what the interface would look like for it and then presented how you would pitch that to a movie studio. So it was like a great just one day thing. And, uh, you know, luckily I was there in the in, in the mix, just being in the middle. And they called, you know, the new uh, operating system OMO. And I was like, yes, like Omatola. That was, that was, uh-huh. it was like, that was, that was my shout out. And I was like, uh, do they need to pay me for that? <laughs> you know, if I would have went into that, I was like, no, it's like, so I think that's the thing is, you know, when you're doing just creative fun things, don't allow all the exploitation that has happened to artists over time. Mm-hmm remove that sense of joy of creativity and that's what i really want to encourage people is like hey there might just be fun things someone's asking to work on a burning man project is it profitable probably not is there probably going to be a bunch of pictures with your installation probably do you want to be associated with that maybe and if so work on it it's fun like Mm -hmm. don't don't make it so strict of oh as soon as i put my hand to paper you need to pay me or as soon as i touch a mouse or a a pen you need to pay me so Still have fun, guys. Still have yeah. fun. It's like the yeah, FI- and, FITC mm-hmm. titles, right? I don't think people got paid oh, for that. Yeah. I, no one, I don't think anyone got paid for that. It was all exposure <laughs> dollars, you know? But that one got a lot of exposure, especially a- among artists, you know? Sure did. We know well, that, who worked on it. We know which parts they did. It was, it was an excellent... It was an excellent piece. That brings up a good point, and I believe MoGraph should develop the exposure coin. So <laughs> yeah. exposure dollars. So when yeah. someone says, and it should be like two to one to the U.S. dollars. So when someone says, "Oh, you'll get plenty of exposure," like, are you thinking oh, like twenty thousand exposure or fifty thousand yeah. exposure? Because <laughs> that's a lot of loot. Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> inter- internet it. dollars. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. exposure. Um, I'll pay you an exposure. Yeah. Good. I and like the exposure. other thing, too, is like, you know, on social media, like, don't be that guy, you know, because there's always that guy that's trying to call it out for something that it's not. And, and uh, you know, we, we had a discussion about this the other day, too. And it's like, you know, you, you get a, reputa- a reputation for who your online persona is. Yeah, and, for sure. And I think it's important to try and stay positive because you don't want to be that guy you don't want to be negative nelly guy you don't want to be the -hmm. person who is fighting with people all the time on twitter and you know because Mm -hmm. what happens when someone's like oh well this person says he's available oh that guy you'd be like oh i don't want to work with that person yeah oh (laughs) you know i think it's really important in our community to have a an online persona that really shows that yeah, yeah, I mean, you're it's easy also, to work with. it's like when you're, when you're going for a job interview, if you don't think that they don't look at your social media accounts and stuff mm-hmm. like that, it's the same if you're freelancing, you know, yeah. if someone says, yeah. you know, uh, blah, 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 check out this person, you know, they're open for work and I go and look and I see it's just a bunch of negative, 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 you know, bad mouth and people, I don't want to work with them. They're yeah. going to be Yelling hard to work CEOs with. CEOs of companies and like, yeah. you know, <laughs> upset that. You know, they're not uh, releasing quick. And I mean, you know, it's like, <laughs> and that's all you see. You're like, man, that's, that's kind of a bad. Yeah. Bad yeah it's, it's, one, it's one thing that I, I strongly recommend. If you are not a happy person, try and work on that. You know, there's, there's a lot of different, <laughs> there's a lot of different things, you know, I get, you know, but you know, there's books on it and everything else. Like try and get more joy out of life. You don't want to be miserable. It's, you, there's no benefit in suffering, just suffering mm-hmm. to suffering isn't a thing. And your reputation is priceless. 
like guard it with your life for sure seriously back in the day i mean defamation and you ruin somebody's character like that can ruin a career you can get people blacklisted i mean you you see it now online i mean somebody starts a rumor or a lie or anything like that and people all of a sudden their their whole careers get ruined um so the the big Mm -hmm. thing is be in the positive you know be you want to be workable and that's one of the things be just an absolute you know lovely being person to work with and people are going to work with you totally yeah totally so let's talk about the road show a little bit too upcoming so this is the motion design tour it's not even a road show anymore Ooh. it is so so Ooh. so big um now and um i can't even uh, it, we're not live yet so i'm gonna i'm gonna wait to give any domains and stuff but i know we were looking at you <laughs> I, guys the first thing i did was concert. google yeah, motion here design here here like, ah. yeah no so, <laughs> so yeah we'll i'll kick that out as soon as it's uh there but it's gonna be like 24 25 cities globally Wow. Uh, Ad- Adobe. So as far as some of the the big folks on board, so it's going to be Adobe, Maxon, Dell, Nvidia. Um, talk to GSG guys. You're involved. You guys as media sponsors. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. LinkedIn's going to be giving away stuff. Redshift, Adobe. Um, so it's this is going to be the biggest creative tour on planet Earth. Cool. And I already have nice. EJ uh, Chris Schmidt. So EJ House and Frauds, Chris Schmidt. Uh, Perception's going to be at some of the cities. Andrew Kramer, I talked to. Video Copa is going to be at uh, you know sponsoring um, Grayscale Gorilla. So I there it is so big. I can't I can't talk about it other than go to it. Yeah. If you're if you're an after <laughs> if you're an after effect user, your cinema user, Maya, like any program definitely go to it because the techniques are going to be like this is this is a game changing road show. Yeah. Um, like 25 mm-hmm. cities everywhere from like I think 11 in North America, three in Canada, and another 10 in Europe. Yeah, All I will from say September uh, to December. When you guys did the road show, the last set of road shows or whatever, that one kind of changed our whole career because that's where you and I hung out for oh, the right. first time. <laughs> you know, and so like I I went out to I flew out to Washington D.C. to hang out with Ariev. You know. Because he was presenting, so I was like, "All right, you know, blah blah blah." I want to present it at at NAB. Yeah, a little bit. No, I yeah, know. Yeah, four yeah. months later, five <laughs> months later, you know, that's where yeah. it was. There's a question in the chat too about streaming. Is anything going to be streamed? Or it is will, this it just... will not be streamed. So get tickets. Like it's going to be if you're in North America or, or Europe, it's going to be fair. There's going to be a stop somewhere close to you. So yeah. get tickets right away because we're locking in venues. We're still on the last couple of venues. So once it's announced, once tickets mm-hmm. are sold out, it's sold out. And the value I can, I can already, t- I can, this is what I can tell you. The value of the free things just for entering and getting a ticket mm-hmm. is already four or five times the ticket price. Awesome. It, it, nice. The value. So it's like, nice. you know, I think they were looking at 95 us or 85 Euro and the, what you're going to get right out of the door on um, software is already mm-hmm. like two, three hundred bucks. Wow. Well, awesome. and w- as media sponsors, we're also going to be doing constant updates, too, about what cities are coming up mm-hmm. and and all the information on that as well. So, yeah, it's a project. So this, this, there's going to be two parts. There's going to be the design aspect that's going to go through the illustration pipeline and more of creating stills. And, you know, which would be great for people who are doing 2D product design and things like that. And then there's the whole uh, motion component. And the motion uh, graphics component is a project that Perception actually is putting together. So they're putting together that project. So we're going to showcase that and a couple of those different scenes in each of those different cities. And then we'll have a keynote by an industry leading artist. It might be one of the people who actually presented and did the little uh, presentation on the motion graphics or the 2D part. or it might be someone completely different. So we got Handel Eugene. It's going to be right after nice. Fest. That's one thing that I'll, I'll... Handel Eugene, he's going to be one of the presenters. But I'll probably have like three or four different people in <laughs> Vancouver just because so many people will be there for Blend and yeah. we're going to be right after that. So if you couldn't go to Blend, get this ticket. Because I couldn't go to Blend. And you couldn't get that ticket then <laughs> come to Camp MoGraph. <laughs> uh, well, do, well, <laughs> yeah. Number one, just come to Camp MoGraph. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's an easy True. one. It's like, go outside, folks. We need, a, we need some right. sun. We all need a little sun. Man, I went golfing. I went golfing this weekend. I took my kid to the driving range. I've been teaching him to golf. Just uh, talking about going outside. I had I had a migraine like that lasted four <laughs> hours after I went outside for an hour. Like I got to get out more. 
Maybe you got allergies or something. I think it was allergies and like I didn't have enough. Like I must have been dehydrated or something. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Get yeah. outside. <laughs> I'm excited about that. That's no gonna more be cool. negativity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else? Anything else with that uh, we want to talk about or we'll just stay tuned right? well uh, yeah on, when it comes to that stay tuned i mean because you guys are in the know so mm -hmm. as soon as we announce and things like that we'll get it out but the, the biggest thing that i could say is get your tickets as soon as they come out these cities are mm -hmm. going to sell out immediately um so that, that's it <laughs> be, be on the lookout oh. you're, you're going to see it on our social channels and stuff like that especially if you're you know uh, an after effects user and you haven't dived into cinema yet and you're like okay you're kind of on the fence this mm -hmm. is yeah you know, i want to go into 3d but you know here it is dive in there it's going to be a huge social networking event too and mm -hmm. you know and that's live <laughs> live social networking it's not just yeah. you know online social networking so it's going to be great for you in your city to be there as an artist because you're going to be able to connect with the community when people are looking to get hired other studio heads are going to be there so yeah, it's it's going to be where you want to be. If you can be at one place besides Camp Mograph, in addition to Camp <laughs> Mograph, no, that yeah. besides, in yeah. addition to it, um, yeah. yeah, you definitely want to you definitely want to hit up uh, the Motion Design Tour. Is awesome. there going to be a separate website for it and everything yeah. for people yeah. to get so, info when yeah, it comes out? So we're working with FMC, so the makers of AE AE World and uh, you know Keyframes. So they've done a number of conferences. So luckily, I got some help on this one, guys. It's it's been <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> it's nice because nice. it's a hell of a production. Yeah, and and you're going to a lot of those. Yeah, I'll probably take care of all of the U.S. and Canada, most likely. Ooh, man, yeah. I'm gonna be busy. That's okay. Be busy year. It is a I, busy I, year. How do you I handle? Did. How do you handle so much travel? Um, I get to hang out with my favorite nerds. You know that. All right, my, <laughs> all right. I'll give you that. Yeah, it's like yeah. when you think about it. So I get the yeah. That's the case. So it's not it's not stressful. Um, you know, I do a, a significant amount of preparation work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have to, once I get the presentation down, I, most of these cities now I'm like 10 years in, so I already know where to go, how to get there. And like, as soon as I touch down, mm -hmm. I feel like, all right, I'm comfortable right. again. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. I'm usually connecting with a local anyway. So it's like, right. oh, cool. I'm, you know, up in Vancouver, I got three or four people to connect with. I'm in Toronto. Yeah. I'm connected with nose man. So I always yeah. have somebody. So it's, you, you know, I'm, I'm never too far from home. And that's what I feel with this, our creative community is when you actually really tap, you know, tap in. There's people that you might have a great relationship with online that you have a beer with or you sit down and mm -hmm. have a vegan sandwich with and you feel great. <laughs> have a Beyond Burger. It's great. Yeah. Sponsored is Noseman going to be around, by the way, at Seagraph? Yeah. Yeah. He'll be, he'll be there. Yeah. He's not presenting, but he'll be... Right. Um, five different companies asked, asked me to staff their, their booth. That is this, this absolutely year. insane. <laughs> when you were telling me that, yeah. I'm like, oh my God. <sighs> yeah. So in addition to what I do for Maxon, yeah. several other people were looking and I, I love them because they're all great companies. Um, but the thing was, I couldn't like it just, it was with all within like four weeks of the show too. So, um, so I do have a couple artists floating around in different places and now with, you know, Redshift and, um, you know, that's a whole nother thing trying to, to make sure that we have redshift artists and yeah and so it's it's good though yeah and for good. people who are actually coming to see graph there's going to be other things that aren't live streamed that for you sure. can check out as well right yeah totally so if you are coming to see graph we the one the one of the partnerships that we do have going on is with intel and box so cool. um took over actually or, or working with uh, them on half of their booth so half of the intel booth is going to be intel box and uh, maxon Wow. And so we're going to have secondary presentations there. So aside from the main stage and all the presenters that you have there, there are also a lot of people are going to be presenting on that uh, stage two or the Intel stage. So in, in oh, that cool. Intel box stage, they're going to like day one, some people who aren't presenting on day one are going to be presenting back there. So you can be able to catch them. Also, David Brodeur is going to be doing presentations of Mark Pototnik. Other two, you know, another high end awesome. folks and uh, uh, Grayscale Gorilla. They're going to do a quick presentation at the start of the show, too. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, it's going to be nonstop. It's going to be nonstop. It's awesome. super awesome. Yeah. And uh, we'll be doing a podcast as well on Monday <laughs> night. Uh, Somewhere. Still, still working out the details of yeah. that, but it will be at Fingers 10 crossed. p.m. But, uh, California you know. time. Somewhere. We're going to be somewhere doing a podcast at that point. Yeah. We just don't know where yet. Um, 
So uh, a couple other topics I wanted to bring up. Number one is there was this this meme going around uh, on, on Twitter, and and it's something that I guess uh, Ryan Summers picked up on and was commenting on a little bit. And it's you it's this the meme. <laughs> what? Uganda Knuckles? No. Uh, <laughs> no that one's old, months so. ago, dude. That one's oh, okay. way even past. That yeah. one's already being hit up in our I mean, nostalgia. That is, yeah, that's that's hours old. Yeah. <laughs> now this was um something that engineers were, were. This was a meme among engineers, like a 10x engineer or or something like that. And some people were kind of translating that to motion design. Like I'm a 10x motion designer and. Basically saying that I'm doing, I'm one person doing what 10 people would do. You know, you, oh, okay. you back in the day oh. had like predators, you know, yeah. that evolved from, I'm a, from editors I'm a, and producers. Uh, uh, Apex designer, yeah. Apex motion yeah. designer. <laughs> I'm a 0.5x, you know, motion designer. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but there were all of these, these things going around because it's, it's like, I, I guess the the question is in this industry you don't really hear as much about it because I think people just kind of get their heads down and get their work done. Um, but you know now as a motion designer you're doing all these other things. I mean even when it comes to stuff like sound design, you know some people mm-hmm. are are doing sound design as well on top of the animations they're doing, which I personally love doing. I love doing adding sound to the projects that I work on because it it feels like it really brings it all together. But um, there was this whole topic of on top of that on like what is happening now with rates in the industry there there's been news going around especially in the last couple of days about places closing you know um or or not necessarily mm-hmm. fully closing but shutting certain offices shutting their doors things mm-hmm. like that and and why is that is it overhead is it the industry as a whole is it is it sales is it things changing and so um on the Monday meeting this morning, it was it was a topic as well, and um, it was the topic of rates falling. Why are the why are the rates falling? Things like that, and um, you know, there's no one good answer. I guess it might be a combination of things. Some people say, well, it's that that's not really happening. It's just you're hearing more about it. I thought it was a good topic to bring up. Um, you know, and my my one thought on it this morning on the Monday meeting was, well. I, I put it, I said, you have a woman named Karen, you know, Karen, of course. It's another internet meme. Matt, nah. you don't know the Karen meme? I don't know. Oh, man. All right. I uh, just, but, I, I thought you were referencing Karen from our old job. She was oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> there's, oh there's, um, <laughs> no, Karen. Karen on the internet is, is like a, a, a imagine, imaginary person who's, she's always she has a specific haircut and always calls the manager i don't i don't know why that's a meme yeah anyway yeah freaking karen Karen. (laughs) but penny penny brought up you know there's some things that kind of feel like graphic design you know you have those um print design shops and stuff that are super cheap and someone is in there in the print design shop making like minimum wage and uh or, or not even that you know somebody's karen's uh friend or or a nephew or something can do a little graphic design and designs right. her a really right. bad logo for her her <laughs> um her pet grooming place and the pet grooming place mm-hmm. is going to do great or great or bad no matter what that logo looks like so she mm-hmm. doesn't care that she's paying 50 or 100 dollars for it and you got things like fiverr and, and there's this feeling that a lot of people have with motion design that that's where some of it is going and and my thought was like you know You've got those people who can't tell the difference between good and bad design, so they're going to go with the fifty dollars design. I and think. I think personally, it's all about. I, I mean, you get what you pay for. You know, most of the time, you get what you pay for. You know, if you're if hiring, you don't know so the say, difference. You what? Know? And what if you don't know the difference? You don't know if it's bad or good. I, I think some people n- know. Like, but, but I think th- we've been inundated with. Uh, with good design so much that people, you know, the stupid saying, I don't know design, but I know it when I see it, you know, it's, it's dumb, but I think some of us actually have that in our brains and can see when something is nice and when something is wrong. Totally. Well, I think the, the one thing that we're, we're approaching, and this is something that I I mentioned a a while ago, as we start picking up all these tools, it's, it's kind of like the millennials. 
right? It's a millennium mm. renaissance, millennium oh, renaissance like that. right? Like since that. Like since that. then, That's we're good. all millennials, men and women. So we're mm. doing, you know, sculpting, we're doing design, we're doing, you know, working with color, light, all the different tools we're working with it. And there is huge competition. But just like anything else, it's, okay, if I'm just looking for something quick because I'm just getting started as a business and I don't have any budget, I'm going to look at some of those other places Mm -hmm. because I'm just getting started. But then once you're actually looking at establishing a brand and a feel and identity, then you're going to be able to start asking those more sophisticated questions and you're going to be working with more sophisticated designers. But I think so Mm -hmm. many people are just trying to start a business, right? So how many people are trying to start a business? All right. Everybody is yeah. like, oh, yeah, you want to be an entrepreneur. This is how you make mm-hmm. your big money. Start your own business. And it's like, great, let's start your business. How much is it going to cost for a logo? And everybody goes and it's like everybody says to rate it ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars for a logo. What? Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's like, OK, well, I'm starting my business. I can't do that. So then the rates yeah. keep going down. So for a lot of people starting off, it's like, all right, I'm just going to get the bare bones to get off the ground. And then once I get moving, then you're going to start upping the quality. You know, Mm -hmm. you're you're going to start doing that. So I would, everybody's trying to start a business. Not all of them are going to be successful. And if you spend all the money on design, it still doesn't mean you're good at sales, (laughs) you know? So a good design can help you sell, but if you don't know what you're doing with that design and you don't know how to capitalize on it, that's when we can really start helping to guide. And I know Christo does a good job of this. He talks about how to, you know, sell yourself in it and help the, help the person who's actually looking to consume. Right. And I think that's part of, uh, you know, as far as the mission of, you know, MoGraph and everything else is to help educate the community of the value of good design, you know, to be able to reach out and let people know like, hey, it makes a difference to hire a quality artist that you're going to work with. Mm -hmm. It makes a difference that, uh, you know, people who know what they're doing and they're good to work with versus somebody that is going to drive you insane. (laughs) Well, the other question, though, is from the other perspective, these people who are undercutting themselves when they they shouldn't be. The people who are making, you know, who are charging a hundred dollar day rate and the people who, you know, and it's even worse in other countries. Somebody on the, the meeting this morning said that somewhere they were working at one point, it was the equivalent of $500 a month for, for work in motion design. And how do we keep it from driving down all the rates as a whole? Is that even possible? Yeah, I do not know if that is possible. <laughs> like I, when it comes to competition, that's the whole thing. We're in a global market now. So I think mm-hmm. you can create, you know, I think there's guilds that can be created and things like that to keep a standard. And, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people can do it. But there's always going to be somebody that will do it for less because if they if they have the time and they have the resources, you know, what's what's to say? Why not? You know, you might want it to keep the, the rates high. But, yeah, if you're in a third world country and you have, you know, an old computer, but you don't have work, you know, our dollar can go far. Yeah. So, yeah, you might just plow on it. I don't, I don't think we can avoid it now that we're more universally Mm -hmm. connected this way yeah but the people here who are going for 100 150 dollars a day i might have said an hour earlier a day 150 a day you know you're you're undercutting yourself you're undercutting other people as well and does it need to be a campaign an awareness campaign yeah I, i don't know like i I, I think there's a I think there's a certain amount of education that comes with that. Like people need to be educated that hey these are these are kind of these are more along the lines of standard industry prices and stuff like that. I think I think you know Joey's book the the freelance manifesto did an, a fantastic job of opening up that conversation because people were afraid to talk about day rates you know mm-hmm. then. Like they weren't sure what what was a good day rate and what wasn't, you know, me too. I didn't know whether I was charging the right amount because I uh, at one point I got I got laid off from the job that Dave and I were working at and I went freelance. Now I was charging like 30 bucks an hour, which is OK, but not for the skill set that I was bringing. And I didn't know what a good day was rate was. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, and so I start talking to some of the other people, the other freelancers like, hey, what's your day rate? Oh, it's sixty five dollars an hour. OK, I'm really undercutting myself because I see them hiring you just as much as they're hiring me. So it's not like they're right. hurting, you right. know. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's it it's. I it wasn't until I was educated to know what those prices were that I was able to feel more comfortable with raising my rates. You know, because you have to understand 
the people who are running businesses, they know the rates, you know, it's the people who are freelancing, who aren't going through and like talking to people and educating themselves about what it should be that they're the ones who are getting taken advantage of. Yeah, totally. Uh, Manor, we will announce where the tickets are, by the way. I'm just looking at some of the chat. Uh, Bob, yeah. Uh, yeah, hello. Good evening. And Amy. Hi, Amy. <laughs> What's she doing on chat, Matt? She, uh, <laughs> she, has another, she, on she puts the live stream <laughs> on the TV and lays in bed and watches it. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Fantastic. Yeah, hey, so, Bob, uh, I got a question about uh, uh, XP Explosia. <laughs> No, seriously, I do, because I ran into this issue. So if I'm moving my XP exposure really fast, like my source, I get it. It's like segmented. What am I doing wrong? All right. Now we can go on. It sounds like your 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 sub. I tried. Steps. I tried that. I tried up in my sub steps to like 50, which I'm pretty sure you're not supposed <laughs> to do. And I still got the same oh, same result. Every I'm surprised time. you didn't crash going to. 50, I was but... surprised, too. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, who from X particles is going to be at Seagraph? We'll, we'll arrange yeah. a meeting to take yeah. care of your explosion. <laughs> That's all, all right. Your that project's questions. already done. I don't care. Oh, yeah. That's another story. For yeah. Another good time. riddance. Don't undercut yourself. Uh, don't undercut yourself yeah. because you never know who you're going to be working for either. You know, normally mm-hmm. you got to be really selective about the, the what you think could be a unicorn and rainbows situation, because it may not be a unicorn and rainbows. It may be right. that you're just undercutting yourself and you're going to have to deal with the same pain project. Right. You know, say no to low. Say no to low. <laughs> That's the new motto. <laughs> but all right. Next topic. I thought that um, I thought there was no use for procrastination in the world until nose man until, would say differently. Oh, yeah, Nose Man would say differently. He says, thrive on your procrastination. I yeah. found a way to be produ- productive in my procrastination or to use it to my advantage. This is something I've been thinking about for a while. And I think there was a, a, a related topic that was on uh, Back to Work with Merlin Mann a couple of weeks ago that just made me start thinking about it again. This is that when you become overwhelmed, this goes back a little bit to the mental health thing that we talked about with Casey. Mm -hmm. When you become overwhelmed with the amount of things you have to do or the amount of problems that you have or things going on in your life, when does that usually hit you? When does it really hit? When you got a lot of stress. When you're overwhelmed? Yeah, when you're overwhelmed and you got a lot of stuff going on, when, when do you tend to think about it the most? about how bad it is and what you got, uh, you know. Well, if it's a personal thing, to me, it's like it, mm-hmm. if a little thing bothers me. Because most things I, I take right. are like, it just rolls over the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm like, all right, I'm something little. And now I'm like frustrated. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm at my capacity. Because this would yeah. never bother me. This would never bother me. And now I'm making a big deal out of it. You know, and just and, because it's disrupting yeah. my flow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what time of day? Let's see. You have all this stress. You have a lot of things on your mind that you have to do. What time of day? For me, it's it's generally at night when there's nothing I can do about it. You yeah. know, it's generally that laying in bed thinking I got to do this and I got to do that and oh my gosh, how am I going to get this done? And what about that thing that that person said today that's really bugging me? And you know, I that kind of thing. You know, it's like you're laying in bed and that's when it all just like comes flowing through. And that's why we you meditate. Know? Yeah, that's right? what, and that's why I meditate. Absolutely, I got a book Absolutely. about it. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Book about it. <laughs> uh, well, my my thought on this was was uh, I, I've tried this a couple times, and, and a, you know, a lot of people will say, "Oh, well, well, it's just not that easy." But um, it's I think that it might be something that might be um, easier to do with practice. I mean, this also applies to the meditation thing, really, which is procrastinating your stress, procrastinating. Uh, wor- your worries because at 11 p.m. I have to continuously tell myself one thing when that comes up in my brain. There is nothing that you can do right now about that thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can worry right now. You can worry all night. You cannot get a good night's sleep, and you can also worry about it tomorrow. But tomorrow is the day that you're going to be able to to handle it so there's mm-hmm. something i know it seems super easy to you know i, I it seems super simple but so, for me i've been doing this practice of procrastinating the worry 
<laughs> until a point when I can actually do something. Like about you'll it. say, I'll worry about that tomorrow. In not so many words. It's a little bit, but it's still, you'll say, I'll worry about that tomorrow, but your brain is still thinking about it. Yeah. You know, you still have the stress. You're still feeling stressed. Mm -hmm. And it's taking the, it's really not the act, the action. It's the feeling that you have. I'm going to procrastinate this in sense of impending doom <laughs> on my stress level yeah. until tomorrow, because tomorrow is the first time I can do something about it. So right now I'm going to go to sleep because that's what I need to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, I think order of operations in that sense is, is really yeah. useful. It's like, okay, sleep takes higher priority. Mm -hmm. So one, one of the things, if, if I'm really stressed and there's a lot of things, I make sure to pull out a piece of paper and write them down. Because then once it's down, I feel like I've already done something about it. I've in, When it's in my <laughs> head, it, it's like I yeah, can do, yeah. my, my mind mm -hmm. is too creative. So then I can take the problem and extrapolate it into a million other problems and a million right. other complexities. <laughs> but if I just put it down, I'm like, okay, there's this, 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 this. Okay, that's all there? Okay, cool, done. Order of operations, it's yeah, like, okay, yeah. that's Sometimes you got to be careful with that, though. You write it down, and then you're like, okay, everything's done. Sweet. <laughs> you know? No, no, I, I didn't cross it off. I just wrote it it's down. It's a to-do list. If, yeah. if it's on a list, it gets <laughs> yeah. done. If it's, it, like, it, but it needs to be crossed off. Yeah. If, if the list exists, yeah. it's just existing as a list until it's crossed off. See, yeah. I had, that, I had that, that same situation where I was like, so I had this idea for a script in my head. You know, and it would, I was thinking about it every single morning on my drive to work. And I was like, I have got to stop thinking about this. I have to write it down. So I wrote mm -hmm. my stupid script. I spent like a week and a half. I did a, a, like a, a 90 or 100 page script, right? And I never touched it again. And <laughs> but it got it out of my head. It got Done. out of my head. It's Ship a shame it. because, you know, <laughs> yeah. I spent so much time and energy thinking about this script to like not do anything about it afterwards. To just get it out of my head. Now I don't even know where it is. I think I saved it on an old computer and it's like, oh boy. Okay. Mm. All right, yeah. whatever. I got tons of stuff in the cloud. Yeah. yeah. Your, your outboard brain is what a lot of people uh, refer to that writing things down. Uh, the, the thing about when something goes through your head like that, like I got to do this thing or, or I've got to, I'm stressed about this thing or whatever it is. Is writing it down kind to kind of stops that closed loop that's in your brain that's going over it over and over and over. It's giving yourself uh, it's giving yourself the green light to go ahead and stop thinking about it because you're not going to forget. I think your brain is trained to think I'm going to forget about this if I don't stop thinking. Yeah, about it's this. important. It's important. It's important. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that proc it's procrastination used for a, a positive reason. Well, it's like you haven't hit the save button yet, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's Your just brain's in the like, cache. You, you, you do, yeah, it's just sitting there. It's like, uh, are you going to save this or what? You write it down. It's like, okay, it's, it's in saved. RAM. It's save. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, and so then when you try and sleep, your whole circulatory system's like, it's overloaded. And that's one of the big things mm -hmm. is it's an electromagnetic system. So if all of your, you know, try, you're firing constantly, and it's like, no, you need to clear the RAM. Okay, let's save that on long term storage. Just go ahead and put right. that on paper. And then, it's, right. yeah, then go ahead and shut down. Yeah, totally. So just act like a computer, everybody. Your whole life will be better. <laughs> just, just become a computer. I mean, if Elon yeah. has his way. Man. I can't wait for that. You know? I think it's going to be excellent. I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> like, I can't wait. Like, honestly, if, if, we, if, if people look at the Star Trek world and they think the Borg are the bad guys, I think the Borg are the good guys. <laughs> honestly. Like, <laughs> there's no hate. There's no fighting against, uh, amongst the Borg, you know? And they're just trying to, they're just trying to, you know, make everyone no. understand each other. That's what it is. There's no individuality anymore either, Who though. Who cares? <laughs> Individuality's overrated. What's, what's that going to do to our rates, though, guys? What is it going right. to do to our rates? It'll be the same rate across the board because everybody <laughs> understands what you're worth. Right. Across the board. Yeah. Same rate ah, across the board. Ah, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's uh, uh, mixed us as on the uh, in the chat the GTD system by David Allen, which is uh, you know he's got his book and everything. Um, just copyright David Code two thousand one, and um, it's a Merlin Man joke. Oh, okay. But um, you've got Matthias, you got a book coming out. I do at long last. It's been man. When you try and do something new, I tell you, so many weird things show up. <laughs> so many weird mm -hmm. things show up. So yeah, the five most important things you don't learn in school is uh, Love it. I'm finally just getting that out to, uh, yeah, and actually Laura, um, 
who's presenting, Laura uh, Kadawaski. She's um, she's going to be. She actually helped me with the the book cover. So uh, That's yeah, beautiful. Thank you, um, or thank her. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see her. So thank thank her. So. This is covering all, you know, some of the major things that we're talking about now, and that's communication relationships, health in the human body, how to make money, how to manage money, and the legal system, and how to put Mm -hmm. that all into balance and work those systems in your life so you're not constantly stressing and not knowing what you should worry about, but giving you systematic approaches and understandings to each of those systems to make sure that it's working with you so you can live a healthy, happy, successful, internally successful life. yeah, and it's like a simple guidebook that I really wish I knew going into high school because that's I feel that's the curriculum for high school because mm-hmm. all the history and mm-hmm. everything else now all that's going to be rewritten because of deep fake and everything else. So history is all going right. to be gone. <laughs> like so, but it's still going to matter if you're making money. It's still going to matter the legal system. You know your quality of your relationships and taking care of your body. You know your new Borg body. You're going to have to work on all those things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that's in. Um, that should be out. I have to find out with the publisher. But right now, I just sent it over to Chris Doe. He's riding the Ford, which I'm so excited about. Uh, fantastic. He, he does so much for the nice. community. And I'm sending it out to a number of folks this week for final beta reviews. Um, so I'll be getting feedback on that. Yeah, I'm, s- I'm sending, uh, sending out to, to you guys, especially, you know, <laughs> cool. parents. That's my big thing is like parents. So you're not overloading yourself with all the other extraneous things that we think about in a day that might not fall into the major categories that are just these smaller things that just pile up and say, okay, Mm -hmm. are these major systems in place? Is my health well? Is my family's health well? Are we legally in a good position? Is our money coming in well? Are we managing it well? How is my relationships with the people in my family, my friends, my intimate relationships? Are those things good? Okay, cool. I can breathe. You know, Mm -hmm. because we were taught to focus on just wrong things in school. And then we get into Mm -hmm. adulthood. We spent so much time focusing on all these other things. We get into adulthood and we're not, our mind isn't trained on what we should be thinking about. That really gives us good quality of life. So Mm -hmm. therefore, then since we don't think about those quality of life things, we end up running a deficiency in those areas, you know, and we don't feel a good handle and connection on it. So that's what this, this book is geared to, uh, do that's my whole thing is to change the education system so cool. i gotta reach out to marianne williamson yeah. i know she's running for president and be like marianne this is what we need new new core curriculum yeah get, get, get <laughs> this installed for everybody and you can find me on yeah. matthias omatola.com so you can just sign up on the um my mailing list there so as i come out with different things this is what i'm going to be talking about but it's all about quality of life it really is it's cool man well, I wanted to get to links, but I only have one link, so I'm just going to throw actually, this up. Actually, I have a link as well. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it the link you sent me this morning? No, no, that's a new Is it link. a link to oh, the okay. past? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I've been playing that. I played that all this weekend. Like, <laughs> nice. Dude, I, 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 I freaking love that game. It is the best <laughs> Zelda game ever. <laughs> I'm glad I got that in there, my, man. My wife was watching me yeah. play it, and she goes, how, how do you know exactly where to go? It's like, dude, I have put well over 500 <laughs> hours into this game. I know exactly where I need to go. Speed running. Yeah, right? I can beat dude, it in five I, minutes. Oh, man. I can beat it in five minutes. Wow. There's a secret really? to it. Yeah, there's a secret where, like, uh, so you go, you go through, like, the, at the very beginning, you go through the main little area, you know, and then once you get into the castle... Once you get into the castle, like, uh, you have someone hit you or something and it knocks you into a wall, you know, or as you jump off, you save it and then quit and then start over. And that puts you at it like a different level than what you're supposed to be, you know? Uh, and so then when you get hit, it pushes you through the wall and then you just walk to the end. It's, it's a really cool <laughs> speed run. It's, it's super cool glitch. Anyway, good glitches. Mm. <laughs> I am so obsessed with Mario Maker Two right now. So good. If and and here's the thing, like I love doing the. Uh, there's some really fun levels in there. Mm-hmm. I love doing the endless play, and and if you just want something fun to do during the day, and you want to have like that fun feeling, like of that that little like you know shot of of uh, what what do you call it endorphins uh, endorphins. 
put it put do endless play on levels that are almost like super too easy, easy for you to play <laughs> right? yeah because you go play like 30 levels and you're like oh, i did a really good job at this yeah <laughs> you know and you just get through it and it just goes forever it is so much fun you i find like some i really like the levels creative. that are 20 seconds or less and uh-huh. you have to figure out exactly like you have to you have to play it perfectly those are my most fun mm-hmm. levels you know where it's basically you just yeah. run the whole time and like you've got to you've got to hit everything correctly <laughs> That's the fun. one that I sent you with all the icicle things dropping yeah. that you, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, where you had to get all 120 coins yeah. and do everything exactly right. Yeah. I've beat it twice now. Just I had to make sure I could beat it again. <laughs> you know, that's fun. but yeah, I've, I've so just been seeing fun. that in the background in, in tech support. Uh, yeah. One of the guys has it on a second screen. And I was just like, oh, what is this? Like Mario Maker 2. It looks good. Yeah. So it's good. It's a fun game. My kid, so like, because they got a two player mode where you can make stuff. And he's like, oh, come on, let's play. And I was like, no, you're terrible at making levels. <laughs> and he just like yeah. grabs bad guys and throws them all over the place. I'm like, thousand bad guys. Yeah. That's, yeah. What we, that's what we do here. He's like, here, daddy, beat this. I'm like, I, I, I can't. I, I literally can't. Yeah. You're dropping Bowser on top of me the second I get here. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, to submit it, you have to clear it. So, right, 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 that's right. The, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. daughter made the, I might have talked about this last week, the yeah. Flappy Kitty. Yeah. It's like Flappy Birds, but you, you got to be the Mario cat. Yeah. That was you pretty know, cool. At, at the end, you clear the level, and he goes, meow. <laughs> How was that again, Dave? <laughs> <It's> going, meow. <laughs> nice. Pretty good. Anyway. That was perfect. Uh, the, the <laughs> only link I got is this um, new School of Motion class. Yeah. Illustration. Illustration. Promotion. Yeah, promotion. yeah, yeah. So uh, 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 Sarah Beth Morgan is going to be the, uh, the teacher for it. Uh, it's a new class that they've got coming out here soon, I believe. Um, registration for the course will open on October 7th. So, pretty cool. I'm super excited about that. Cool. All right. The moment you've been waiting oh, hold for... hold on, hold on. There's actually one other oh. thing. Uh, Max oh, yeah, on oh, yeah. just uh, on their, their page, on their news page or whatever, uh, it's uh, Unreal Engine. So, uh, Cinema 4D now supported natively in oh. Unreal Engine. That was put up on our page? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, so, like, nice. you can so actually... This one. Yeah. So, you can uh, import .c4d files directly nice. into Unreal Engine. Game That's super changer. Rad. Yeah. Because you could do that with Unity before, but not Unreal. Right. So, that's pretty dope. Yeah, that's super rad. I need to work with yeah. Unreal. I like Unreal. I like both those engines. I just, yeah. I, I have to redshift. I have to learn, I like, all the things to learn, right? I yeah. know, right? The cyber brain is like going to help. Say. The, the neural link yeah, is going to help. I know redshift. <laughs> yeah. I know redshift. <laughs> Show me. <laughs> Show me. Yeah. Peoples, peoples, where do you get the people? Peoples, peoples. What's up with the uh, all right, so the the moment you've been waiting for, Matthias, we're gonna do a little Beeple's people. Beeple's here. people, and then I can go load yeah. the truck. Then you can yeah. go load the truck. Well, Beeple's people and MoGraph recommends, and we're all out right. of here. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take that opportunity to run to the restroom. I wish you would. <laughs> um, take out your Beeple viewer of choice. For me, that's Twitter, and uh, look up look up the old Beeple account. <laughs> what is that on Twitter? Is it Beeple or is it Beeple Crap? I don't remember. Beeple, there's Beeple and there's Beeple underscore crap. So let's see. It's just Beeple. So go to. I'm on his Twitter. July. Yeah, J- Beeple's Twitter, July 15th, Year of Our Lord 2019. And <laughs> <laughs> this one, I wish Matt were here, but uh, this to continue our theme, this one is called Beyond Meat. And I'll bring that. It's, you know, beyond. It's Beyond Burger, right? Oh, nice. It's called beyond Meat. I don't know. Um, but I thought this was interesting because last week we were bringing up this this one. Let me see if I can find it real quick. We we're bringing up this one where they were constructing. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, organic testosterone milking day last week, <laughs> and we were noticing. <laughs> we were noticing that there are these pigs down here, and we were trying to understand. The purpose of the pigs. I don't know if this is a new theme. Mm. You know, we might have to ask people in person <laughs> next week. 
what's going on with this, but the 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 presence of animals around the tech, I thought is well. This is, is this is all because of uh, what happens in uh, in the post vegan wars. So in mm, the, in the near yes. future, there is a catastrophic war between you know uh, the carnivores and vegetarians. And this is in, th- in that post era as vegetarians seek to defend, you know, the herds of mm-hmm. animals. So in the post vegan wars of the, the late 20th, you know, 21st century, we, we go into some major tech battles of humanity where, um, you know, it, it, I mean, the Matrix kind of took off of that whole theme with blocking <laughs> out the sun so all vegetation dies because they wanted to kill mm. off the vegetarians. But, you know, in, in this scenario, <laughs> You know, vegetarians uh, don mech suits to protect the animals. Huh. Um, I'm not sure if you saw his Instagram story that came along with this. Um, no. But uh, so this one in particular, I, I think you might be a little off because uh, uh, on the Instagram story that went along with this, he did a close up of the cow with a speech bubble that says, I have nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the whole thing is the the cows are kind of in uh, Stockholm syndrome, so gotcha. they're they're okay. used to mm. being you know taken advantage of. And okay, so so maybe yeah. maybe this is a portable milking machine, right? So instead of to, for creating happy cows, they are you know they they are they uh, free range cows yeah, they voluntarily, right? Go, ask for and milking. so hmm. like he's got like his his fingers turned into milking tubes that. You know, milk the udders of the cows. Very, yeah, see, very friendly Matt, looking. Yeah. <laughs> but while you were in the restroom, we were talking about, you know, there were the pigs in the testosterone, organic testosterone milking right. day one. Right. And so there's that. And then and this is also called Beyond Meat. So this right. is the theme with the Beyond. I'm wondering gotcha. if these okay. are actually mechanical cows, but somehow oh. they're able to like do the Beyond beyond burger around the mechanics so they look like cows they're actually mobile greenhouses and they yeah they actually gotcha. develop all the plant material and then okay. you, mm-hmm. you you kill them off and uh, make beyond meat okay yeah and instead of instead of expelling methane they're absorbing it oh that's such a good idea yeah. why can't we just make yeah. cows that do that I don't know. Because science? Because reasons? Because <laughs> Elon Musk hasn't done it yet? Come on, yeah, Elon. Right. He's our Dr. Doom, and Doom we right. trust. Right. <laughs> All right, the next one is going to be July 16th. This is called Snail Apocalypse. <laughs> this, yeah. I, 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 I 100% believe this is going to happen. Mm. Probably. Yeah. It seems, you know... It starts off in reasonable yeah. that it would, and it starts possible. off in the sea, so who knows what's in there? That's true. right. Do, can snails swim? Uh, well, they can attach themselves to just about anything. I sure hope that's yeah. not salt water. Ooh, that'd be, ah. that'd, that'd be bad. Yeah, wow, maybe so that's the, their. It looks like, I mean, maybe it's riding on the boat, you know. The one back there isn't. There's another one. I don't know, but like, oh, they become saltwater. That's what happens. They mutate and become saltwater. You know, friendly. And that's that's all they're waiting for. That's how it ends. Right. That's like cats with opposable thumbs. That's it. That's all it takes. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Yeah. They are slowly (laughs) mutating. (laughs) Slowly taking. I wonder wonder how how slowly. Really There's people slowly. on the boat. The people on that ship right there have just been standing there for hours like, it's coming right <laughs> <No>! at us. <laughs> Still going. Just move anyway. out of the way. Yeah. All right. And then the next one is called the True Lion King or True Lion King. That's the name of this one. This is uh there's some really funny ones. I, I don't I don't know what's going on with the old uh yeah buzz buzz meat year like but uh you should uh, mention the good... uh the the event that he's doing in toronto oh toronto yeah. uh super excited to announce a gallery exhibit opening next month that will feature all four thousand plus every days from the first 12 years on one wall it's opening reception august 23rd free prints free drinks come say hi Beeple.eventbrite.ca and he, he calls it an effing S load of <laughs> crappy pictures on one wall, but he doesn't abbreviate it like I do. Yeah. All right. 
The last one is going to be July 21st. That's my brother's birthday. Hi. Uh, True Lion King. <laughs> and I think this fits pretty much al- along the lines of our existing story of worshipping the skeletons. Mm. Mm-hmm. Seems like it. Um, and it's got a good theme because of the Lion King and such, which we haven't talked about. Uh, I don't know if you want to get into that or maybe wait till later to talk about the li- Lion the King. The Lion King? But- yeah, I don't care about that. Yeah. A great VFX. I, have, I have no interest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I keep hearing, yeah, great VFX, not a great story. But yeah. Not the story in general, but just the redo. And, yeah. Anyway, um, I guess they're worshiping. Was this a lion? This wasn't a lion because lions don't have necks like that. Or was it? Or and, was that, it? and that was what made it the king of the lions because yeah. it was shaped like a velociraptor. <laughs> the king of the lions yeah. is actually a saber toothed tiger. <laughs> I mean, look at all the skulls around it. Yeah, right? it dominated. It's den. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like this is some, some sort of tomb or something, too, you know? We need, so. we need to get someone to take that skeleton and recreate it, like the Discovery Channel, and see what type of lion that would be. Oh, right, 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 right. yeah. Let's reverse engineer that. Can one of our modelers yeah. get on that, please? Can yeah. The community- yeah, 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 yeah. It would be great exposure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course it will. <laughs> That's uh. funny. All right. Well, that wraps up Beeple's People. So let's move on to MoGraph Recommends. And we have a list of things that uh, we're going to ask you here. Um, Usually I send this ahead of time. I apologize for not sending this ahead of time. But I think you'll do fine. Beth, we'll do it live. Uh, Mm. Do it live. (laughs) Number one, we were going to ask you, what's your favorite movie? Uh, Ooh, Infinity War. Okay. Followed by Endgame. Easy enough. Yep. Easy enough. Endgame was excellent. Yeah, Infinity War, Endgame as one movie. Yeah. The Infinity Endgame War. Yeah. See, and <laughs> Infinity, has it been long Infinity enough game. to where we can actually talk about this? Yeah. Or should we not? No, we, I we don't can, know. The, 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 we're in a spoiler free zone at this point. Everybody is just reviewing. It's just reviewing. Dave, have you even seen it yet? Um. Did I see? No, I did not. All right. I did but, not. Well, you, because... need to go, you need to go see it. Give, yeah. the, give the money to the mouse. What are you doing? Right. <laughs> give the money to the well, mouse. Well, it's because I didn't see it in the theater. So. Uh, okay, well, it's find still the, in theater. the theater. Yeah, find it in the yeah. theater. Is and it go... still in the theater? Yes. Yeah, dude. They just re released it with like a minute and a half of new footage or something <laughs> oh, like that. I saw I Dark know. Phoenix. Well, that's. Oh, I'm why, sorry. Why'd you make that decision? Yeah. 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 Nobody said that was the greatest movie of all time. Right. Yeah, Endgame that's, is actually, a, that's another topic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because it's 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 really like now it's like special effects and like cool looking special effects are a dime a dozen. Yeah, and so now like people are just making these movies with cool special effects and no story. Yeah, Endgame you know? is all story. Go enjoy. Yeah. Go good. enjoy. So good. Endgame. good. It's so, funny. Like it did not go anywhere near where I expected it to go. And that's like, why it's a good. <laughs> that's why it's yeah. good writing. Like I thought the story. The story that I thought was going to happen happened in like the first twenty minutes. You know, <laughs> it was like done. Oh, it's like all right, Ant Man just destroys Thanos by getting going small no. and going up his butt. <laughs> no, it's that's it what was, the internet thought was, was going to happen. Not his butt. It was his ear. Yeah, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> oh no, the internet was real adamant about that theory. Hmm. Wonder why. Um, <laughs> all right, music. What's your favorite music? And this could be. What you like to listen to on a regular basis, or maybe when you're working, and maybe those are the same, maybe they're different. If I'm working, it's classical. So give okay. me give me Bach, Get Wolfgang, Amadeus, and stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. always been my like working music. I can just put that on um, when I'm enjoying music. It it's a wide range, um, pretty much everything but country for the most part. Sometimes I, mm-hmm. I sometimes it's like 80, 80s rock, and I'm just like, oh, it's just an eighties rock day for some reason. I need to listen to you know White Snake and just a oh, whole you know, <laughs> poison and just like I I just for some reason you know being a, a child of the eighties pour some sugar mm-hmm. on me yeah totally totally Shook up ramen. Some, so some cherry pour some, some cherry pie up ramen <laughs> some book of ramen pour some shook up ramen right that's oh, how it is okay yeah so <laughs> no? some, some cherry pie all that um so yeah 80s rock, mm-hmm. rock is like more of a theme i'll d- definitely do hip-hop i do like a lot of the older hip-hop than 70s 
some of the mumble rap and stuff of today. Mumble rap. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, listen, I'll listen to pop and then also, <laughs> also a lot of uh, Latin as well. So I'll, I'll just turn on like Latin music too. I'm like, I'm, my Spanish is not that good, but damn it, it mm-hmm. makes me want to dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like, oh, some bachata, some merengue, some pasta doble salsa. So I, I love, funny. yeah. Some of that Gloria. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> the rhythm's gonna get you. It does the, uh, my wife and I have a a, a joke where like you know we we'll, we try it's it's almost like Rick rolling the other person, but it's with Gloria Estefan. Nice, you know. <laughs> where, I, I, I don't know what what the song is. Uh, anyway, so like yeah. we'll try and get the other person to accidentally listen to it or surprise them with it. <laughs> You know, and it's always really funny. Yeah, and it's always good. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. always good. Come on, check your baby, baby. Do the conga. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you know it. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Just makes me want to play it now. Just, Alexa. No, just no. kidding. <laughs> no, no, stop, Alexa. Okay, we're good. I had to, I had to unplug uh-huh. mine because you were making mine go off so often. Sorry. No. As, far, uh, as far as modern artists, I really like The Weeknd and like John Legend. So for more of the smooth, sexy yeah. sounds. Yeah. Cool. I like The Weeknd. It's pretty good. Um, all right. Next is favorite TV show. Ooh, favorite TV show. Oh, it's going to like a lot of it is more anime. So okay. I love me. Mm. I love me some One Punch Man. I was going to say One Punch I Man. Love, I've heard good I, stuff about I that. I love One Punch Man. Yeah. So Saitama is, is one of my favorites. Uh, like it's not currently running, but Full Metal Alchemist is probably one of my favorite of all time. Full Metal Alchemist, Full Metal Alchemist uh, Brotherhood, those were two big, big ones. Uh, Basilisk was a short series; it was one, but it's one of my all-time favorite. Uh, I think that might be on Hulu, but uh, really good. So most of mine are actually anime because I feel that they touch on a lot of really deep topics, mm-hmm. um, but are, are presented really well and accessible and fun. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Rupp says, "I will never stop talking about Breaking Bad or The Wire." <laughs> it's a family guy joke. Yeah, I get that. We talked yeah. about that. Office. <laughs> um, podcasts. Do you listen to any podcasts on the reg, or are you too busy? Unfortunately, I don't. Most of the time that I spend, I'm listening to audiobooks. So my favorite podcast is Audible.com, <laughs> and my selection of yeah. all the countless books that I read when I'm on the road. Maybe a little Gary V. Do you ever listen or, or watch no, any of the things? No, I, I listen to his book. You know, I, I listen yeah. to his book. Um, but aside from that, no, I have a long lineup of books that I listen to from a number of different folks. Probably one book that I listen to the most consistently on repeat is uh, well, The Master Key System. That's one I strongly recommend. And uh, by Char- Charles F. Hanel, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And then constantly on repeat is Change Your... Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Mind by Wayne Dyer, which is his interpretation of uh, the Tao Te Ching. So, really deep I think stuff. I've read really Think good. and Grow Rich. I have read Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, it's a, it's a classic. It was good. Yeah, I don't out, remember it now. Yeah, outwitting the I remember enjoying good. it at the time. <laughs> it was yeah. like required reading in my at, at the Art Institute when I was there. Oh, nice. Good, good, for, right. good for them. Yeah. Is, it, is it similar to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or whatever that is? <laughs> eh, it has, I mean, it has concepts of what successful people do differently than, it, you know, successful money people, I should say. All right. And now, plug-in. Favorite <clears throat> plug-in. Oh. Um, X-Particles, probably. Probably cool. X-Particles. Between X particle, well, Redshift is just Redshift now, so that's not a yeah. Yeah, so it's just <laughs> right. it's it's really X particles. So I feel with X particles and what they're doing, and with Cinema and Redshift, you can have a full VFX pipeline, um, yeah. mm-hmm. which is amazing. Because before it was like okay, using turbulence for smoke fire and this and that, and still you know great plugin. But now like X particles has just done such a great job of like adding so much more value in there. So mm-hmm. yeah. And it's nice to be able to stay within cinema for all of that. Oh, too. yeah, totally. The, yeah. the cinema pipeline, it still has that feel. That's what, that's what I like about X Particles is it feels like you're still working with you know, what you know and at least what I know and love. It's kind of a theme in my presentation. Oh. So, yeah. Well, there you go. Um, headphones. What do you recommend for headphones? Well, I'm rocking my, you know, Maxon's finest <laughs> right, right here. 
Well, it's the same I have, I have a whole box hooks. full of them. I'm <laughs> sorry, but they're the most <laughs> painful headphones I've ever worn in my life. <laughs> you, need, you need to change your ears, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Talk to Elon about that. You're wearing them wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Stop, stop putting funny. them where Ant Man goes, and maybe you right. can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> funny. <laughs> Uh, webs favorite. Okay, we used to have favorite website or Chrome extension. We're changing this now Ooh. to your favorite app. What's your go to app on your phone? Oh my goodness! Like you, the the one that is like muscle memory. You open your phone and you're always opening it. Good lord! I open <laughs> so many dang apps. I, I know. I've seen, your, be, I've seen your Chrome website or bar. Chrome extension. You oh, see, man. you see my Chrome. Okay, so if your it's tabs, if it's Chrome, I really like Loom. <laughs> Okay, uh, what's Loom? Loom allows you to do video recording. So it does oh. video, video recording. It can record your desktop. So that's what I've been using for feedback for a lot of artists. Gotcha. So I can just oh, yeah. hit record. It's totally free. And then it archives all of your different recordings. So if you're looking at Camtasia oh, no and everything way. else and you can edit, um, it's a really great app. So I okay. like that one a lot. Nimbus is another cool. great one for screenshots. So if you're doing screenshots and you want to take a whole page that actually scrolls down where you have to scroll down, it can actually, really? so you can, yeah. So Nimbus is the, uh, the name of that one. So it does a number of different ways of screenshots. So those are those two, um, on my phone, something really simple. It's probably just talking to Siri because I, I have a very good personal really? relationship with Siri. I know other, other people, do. other people don't, yeah. but me yeah. And, yeah, me and Siri, we get along great. But I think actually probably what I open up surprisingly is a, a app called, well, I actually open up probably think or swim because I do a lot of trading. So for mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. trading, that's what I open up. But daily stoic is what I open up. It's, you know, pretty much daily. Which is just a quote from Stoicism, a lot of Marcus Aurelius, uh-huh. um, you know, quotes of the day that just help me keep my mind balanced and things like that. So between that and Think or Swim are probably my most opened apps. Cool, I man. think I can definitely tell that you use the, the text, the speech to text a lot <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> I'll yes. get a text from yeah. you and be like, make sure you email me that pepperoni. Yeah, <laughs> you know what's I'm up. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, I use my context clues and figure that out. Pepperoni on its way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Incoming pepperoni. Yeah. All right, now, this is the last one. This is the hardest one for, for most people here. But I, th- I don't know. I feel, I like, feel you, like you I feel got good this. about you. You've got, you got this. this. <laughs> and this is, what is your favorite life hack? Oh, favorite life hack. Um, yeah. For me personally, it's earning my shower. Uh, mm. I, why did you have to say that? You know, Casey Hubke a few weeks ago or whatever, he talked <laughs> about that you mentioned earning your shower. Okay. And so that has been in my head nonstop every uh-huh. time I think, oh, I should work out right now. And I don't. Yeah. You know? yeah you I'm like, oh, you, you need to earn your shower. Oh, you, get, like- you, need to, you need to earn it. You know? It's- yeah, you use walls and stuff to, to work out on and like <laughs> well, just, all like just yeah. real just really simple. It's it's that and then salad I found out is like a life ha- literally <laughs> salad is a life hack. I just pretty much eat it for lunch and my body just it, it helps you just whatever you eat, just eat more salad. There's a book called um what's it? Uh Eat to Live. And mm-hmm. Dr. Furman wrote it and he's like, Okay, if you're eating meat, you're eating all these other things, but if you just make like salad 90% of your meals, your body's going to be in great condition because the fiber and everything else helps cl- clear you out. It keeps your whole mm-hmm. uh, gut health and everything there. And I was like, what? And I did that and I was like, oh my goodness. Salad? That's it? That, like the answer was salad this whole yeah, time? I, I feel like, I, I, I feel like sometimes salads, specific. like you can get a 2,000 calorie salad. Right. Well, most I was going to say, my salads have cheese and yeah, ham. Yeah, and, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's like a, a ham salad. That's not a salad. Okay. Salad is mostly <laughs> yeah, the... It's ham with my, lettuce. My salad is made of bread and has sauce on it and cheese <laughs> and sometimes pepperoni. Beyond salad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. I put salad on my pizza, so therefore, Dude, pizza salad. If somebody could make Beyond Pizza, oh man. So, um, no, but so earning my, my, my shower and salad. So that's one of the things I used to work out, you know, it'd be like an hour and a half in the gym, you know, going to and from the gym and everything. And then I think I was watching the Joe Rogan podcast, and um, it was one, somebody who was like, okay, yeah, in order to really 
stay in shape, you can, you know, tear up your muscles a whole bunch and, you know, pump iron, or you could just consistently do stuff. And I was like, oh, really? And I was like, all right, let me just find a couple of exercises. So it's literally pull-ups, push-ups, squats, and abs. I, Where do you I, do pull-ups at? I got a pull-up bar in my back. Okay. Yeah. So do you carry that? Do you bring that with you everywhere you go? No, but most of the most of the hotels have a gym, okay. so I, I, okay. I do that. And if not, I'll just you know do other you know more more push-ups or whatever, and then I'll just do harder push-ups and things. So I found that that is like it keeps the body, and I do it first thing in the morning. So it's like uh-huh. before my shower, and my workouts are never more than 10 minutes and then at the office we have like a dip bar or something in the warehouse so i'll just do that when i go to the bathroom i'll just do like 25 and then just like that's <laughs> you gotta it. earn your bathroom break <laughs> yeah bathroom break so <laughs> yeah. so those little things instead of me taking two it hours could be dangerous <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you you'll be jacked <laughs> oh man <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! How well does that say that you know me that well? <laughs> oh uh, yeah! That's so those, that's my life hack: is earning your shower and just eating salad oh, that's every good. day for lunch. So yeah. push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups. What else? The squats. Squats. Okay. Yep. Mm. All right. Working all the main right. so muscles. Yeah, give yourself five minutes and just knock those out. And I just do like so one, one a day. Do you I do focus do on you one a day? Get up. And immediately do those things like so, uh, you yeah. roll out of bed and just start so, like put, uh, yeah, doing push ups. I, I get up or and then I, I fall to the floor like Batman and then just start. No, I'm just, <laughs> I've, done, I've done that. Don't do that. Uh, don't, don't do that. So, um, no, so I, I get up or do and I you like, do you like wake up first? Yeah, I do a little meditation. I drink some water. I actually do some breath work. So, uh, mm-hmm. breath of fire is one, one of the things that I do to help oxygenate the body. And then after that, then I go into my push ups. Yeah, How many push-ups so. do you do? Uh, usually like 50 at a time at an angle. So that's it. Just uh, like my feet on the bed. Your feet up. Yeah. yeah. So and the other thing I've been looking They're at so is the, the different ways to do them. What like the Avengers, what people are using in Hollywood to get into shape. Mm-hmm. So instead of just like doing push-ups, it's like doing push-ups. So your hands are like more further in front. So work the upper chest. So your chest looks wider. Gotcha. Because I was like, why do we work out? It's like to look a certain way. No one gives like, yeah. I'm not going to really need to move 300 pounds ever. Like right. the only thing I want <laughs> right. to look like, like just everybody just wants to have the look. Right. I mean, people go through surgery to have the look. So I'm like, yeah. okay, what mm-hmm. are the exercises that make my you know chest and shoulders look wide? I'll do those. And that's mm-hmm. it. So I'm just doing like some of those Hollywood uh, little hacks there. Cool. I got a list of foods that made my chest wide. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Just trying to do the Captain America thing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Cool. Well, that's going to be fun at Camp Mograph because. Camp uh, Camp Mograph. Join Casey every morning in the. Yeah. Earn our showers. Earn our dive in the lake. Yeah. Yeah, It's going to be a little cold for that, but. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. (laughs) Ice baths are good for you. (laughs) Yeah. See? See? (laughs) Thanks, Nick Campbell. Oh, yeah, he does that, too, right? Yeah. I shower. <laughs> Takes the cold showers. I do that, too. It's good yeah. stuff. That's, uh, oh, who is that? That's that one guy. The Iceman. The, who's Iceman. the guy that does the, uh, he has that whole book. He has that whole Winhoff. book. It's talking it's, about. It's the Winhoff method. Yeah, but there's, oh, gosh, I wish I could remember his name right now. Um, I read his book, and I don't remember. It's really weird, because he has this entire book that's about fitness and uh achieving your goals but then there's like two chapters about uh how to please a lady and it's so random and i'm like why is this in this book just ri- chapter 10 is just completely off the wall and then it's back to like productivity. it's like one of those uh it's like when uh the uh matt damon and uh ben affleck sent the script you know and there was that like highly sexual scene in it in uh uh Oh, what was it in uh, Goodwill Hunting? Just uh-huh. to see if anyone actually read it, you know. Oh, nice. mm. But that's what the publisher, like, that's what the person who wrote the book did and sent it to the publisher, but forgot to take it out to make sure that they read it. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, you just save it for another book. You just say, right. "Hey," and in my other book, I teach yeah. you how to please a lady. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to look it up on Audible right now. Uh, oh, it's Tim Ferriss. Yeah, I was going to say the Four Hour Work Week guy. Yeah, he, he, yes, I mean, he does a lot of the everything. Four hour body. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So, uh, so random. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he does a lot of random things, though. He, he's an ex- yeah. living experiment. I like a lot of what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Word. So, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a whole different book for me. 
Uh, it's not in my five most important things. I talk about communication and relationship. If you're looking for technique, now you, that's a whole different book. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here, man. We really appreciate you being on. We know you got to go load yeah. the truck and yeah, we got to send we're you more gear you to put week, on the truck. Uh, this week, Friday. Yeah, I'll see, yeah. see you in a couple of days, oh, gentlemen. Man. All right. Yeah, great times. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah. hello, community. All you true believers. Thank you for all that, that you do. So I can't wait to see you guys all at SIGGRAPH and uh, the upcoming motion design tour and yeah, anywhere I catch you. So please come say hello. It's awesome. Cool. Well, you can rate us on iTunes, leave a review, you can subscribe, that helps get our ratings up. We're also on Spotify now, if Yay. you want to ditch your old iTunes. And you can subscribe to our newsletter on the site. You can say you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt with the MoGraph logo tee, the Paul Bab, Feel the Bab 2020 shirt, all the profits from that. Go to Doctors Without Borders and the Render Things hoodie, long sleeve shirt and tee. And then, of course, the, that render is fire shirt, which I will be sporting for my presentation <laughs> this uh, in funny. a couple weeks. So that'll be fun. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, YouTube, MoGraph.com. And that about wraps it up. Awesome. So. Reviews or Matthias on Matola.com, too, is if you want to follow me for other, other rantings and uh, general information about life hacks and things. Cool. Sweet. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. Until next week, I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And I'm Matthias. <laughs> Have a good one. Later, yeah. yo. It's pretty good, I guess. MoGraph.com, an online resource for motion graphic artists. Start your week with the MoGraph podcast. Industry news, interviews with your favorite artists, and terrible humor. Watch live shows and interviews from MoGraph events like NAB, SIGGRAPH, HALFRES, and local meetups. <laughs> Our MoGraph talks feature live demos and motivation from artists all around the world. Sometimes you gotta make stuff that you're not gonna put on your reel, and I'm not here to judge. What if Rick and Morty show up for the countdown at midnight? That's where I peaked in life, in my career. We gotta stop this thing, Rick! It's gonna kill us all! Hear from the people that create your software, design your render engines, and artists that are changing the face of modern motion graphics. Can you get that render done? Yeah, you better frame, frame what? MoGraph tutorials and online classes will teach you about Cinema 4D, After Effects, as well as other popular software and render engines. Throw in the HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. Branch into new software, learn time-saving tips, techniques, workflows, and lessons that'll keep you up to date in the world of motion design. Oh, brother, those are some of my favorite elves. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join the conversation in our live sessions. Check out our plugins or join the hundreds of daily active users in our Slack channel for technical help, advice, contests, or just to joke around. Real nice banana. Yeah, that's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Subscribe today and get the latest updates on our YouTube and other social media channels. Take all your dreams and just do it! We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe to MoGraph.com.